You're not feeding Sasquatch, you're feeding a really stoked coyote. That's all you're doing. So I think at this point, instead of coming and finding Bigfoot, I think that, you know, I just do something else. Have the host of the show come up with a brand new show called Finding Employment. I think that would be a fun one. supposed to be gay. I think like in heaven they built like three quarters of a gay person and then they forgot to flip the final switch and they just sent me out and it was like, you marked that one gay, right? And it was like, oh no, was I supposed to? And they were like, oh man, well, this will be a very interesting person. This will be a very silly person. I was definitely gay when I was a little boy. A lot of little boys are gay, you know, they're very flowy and they have hard opinions on things. I don't mean that I was a sexually active gay man when I was a little boy, that's not what I mean. When I was a little boy, I was more like, like a 67-year-old gay man. I was kind of over it sexually, you know? I was just like an old queen. I would come out to the recess yard and be like, everyone get out of my way. I just want to sit here and feed my birds. The gym teacher would tell me to play kickball, and I'd be like, you want me to do what? Real quick, I, this happened pretty recently. I was in a restaurant. I was in a restaurant. 
restaurant near here in the West Village, and I was at the urinal, and uh, an old gay man came in the bathroom with a walker like this, and he said this to me. He went, I'm either having a drink or I have to pee. You're living the golden years, kid, not me. Like, he spoke in rhymes. It was crazy. It was such a weird interaction that I wasn't sure if it actually happened. I came out of the bathroom and I asked my girlfriend, I was like, did you see like an old man follow me in the bathroom? And she was like, John, that bathroom's been closed for 40 years. Whoa! Whoa! Where was I? I'm, I'm not gay, but I might be, and I have a girlfriend, and she's a female person. <laughs> It's going very well, I love her very much, and so a few months ago she was like, okay, it's going well, so now uh, I should meet your parents, because that's what people do when a relationship is going well. They meet each other's parents, and I've never understood that. I've never been with my girlfriend and thought like, oh, honey, tonight is going great, but do you know what would make it perfect? Charles and Ellen Mullaney. Come on, let's get them in the mix. We've been going pretty hot and heavy lately. I think it's time we bring in two older Catholic people. My oldest just wanted driving lessons. The biggest, he's almost 16. To take me driving. Oh, are you ready to drive? Hell yeah, I kick butt on Xbox. <laughs> Drove him around, did some U-turns. You got kids, man? No? Yeah? Driving is frightening. Yeah, and I, I realized the one thing, he's going to be a good technical driver. He'll be all right if I can just get some, some forethought into his little grill and make him think a little bit. The one thing I want him to know, though, is if you drink, if you go out with your buddies, if you drink, call me. Don't drink and drive. I, thank you. I had that arrangement with my parents, and they called all the time. Up, come get us. <laughs> and I gotta go ahead and say for the record, because my mom's gonna hear this on the CD, she goes, that's bullshit, because that's what my mom says. And, and you, mom, if you're listening, <laughs> remember the BMW that I wrecked? Alright. Uh, who was drunk that night? Whatever. My parents partied hard. I was the only kid in school but a six-pack to the canned food drive. <laughs> Would have been a 12-pack, but my stepdad drove that day. So. <laughs> that was the rule. Miss the bus, risk your life. to watch out for their kids like holidays like halloween you're supposed to follow your kids around bring flashlights check their candy my mom did you know she, she checked our candy she ate half of it you know, oh that one's unwrapped you know, no, no. wasn't for you got to it you're breaking off the pixie sticks no that one's like But the, the parents now, they don't follow their kids around to look after them. They follow them around in golf carts drinking. <laughs> Little dude comes to my door last year. Trick or treat, Mr. Tim. And my daddy needs ice. Here's a Snickers and your daddy needs help. That's what he needs. My name's Tom Mabe. I, I do pranks for a living, and I was uh, recently at Reader's Digest, and the lady said, tell us about your very first prank. And it got me thinking, I was eight years old, Louisville, Kentucky, and I, I built a snowman out in front of our house. And I went to bed, woke up, and someone killed it. They ran it down the pickup truck, and I was, I was pretty upset. And uh, my mom came out and said, Tommy, baby, it's okay. I helped you build another snowman. Thanks, Mom. So we built another snowman. Had the hat, the carrot nose, looked like Frosty. And I went to bed, I woke up, and they killed it again. 
He's like, well, Tommy, baby, won't you build a snowman in the backyard? But no, Mom, the whole purpose of building a snowman for people to see it. Yeah, see a snowman in the backyard. So you go and say, I got this, I got this. So I built another snowman, put the hat back down, carrot nose. I went to bed, I went to bed, and around midnight, I'm awakened by a BAM! Now look outside my bedroom window. There's a pickup truck stuck in our front yard. And there's water spewing out of the grill. I built a snowman on top of the fire hydrant. <laughs> It's Jacob Bing. That's good. It got me thinking about my uh, my my next prank. I was 13. I was a freshman. So I guess 13 to freshman. And, and uh, my cousin called me. He lived eight houses down. Like Tommy, don't answer the door. I do what? He said, don't answer the door. <laughs> Why? They're going door to door selling stuff. What are they selling? Is it home security systems. <laughs> Ten minutes later, there's two guys walking up our front porch. My brother and I bust out from screen door wearing a ski mask. <laughs> I'm holding a crock pot. <laughs> I look back, he's got the cat. Really? <laughs> you stole the cat? <laughs> a lot of stuff going on in the world. Jeez Louise, just got the, the debt. That's scary. And, and uh, we're, the illegal aliens now in Georgia, that's going to you know, here, Here's what I think about the illegal aliens. I think they're confused. If they want to take American jobs, they should move to India. <laughs> <laughs> but when's the last time you called American Express and spoke with American? You talk to someone, pretend to be American, like, is it? <laughs> My name is Andy. <laughs> Mahana from Bullock County, Kentucky. <laughs> it ain't good to hear your voice. <laughs> and they always try to use one of those Americana phrases to make you feel comfortable. You're like, and who's my brother from another mother? Well, hey! But they don't listen. Discipline, totally different. Boys and girls, you have three girls? They used to walk on eggshells. To just discipline girls, they take what you say so seriously. You do the lightest thing. May I speak with you, young lady? I'm disappointed in you. I was expecting a lot better behavior from a young lady like you. I don't expect to see that again. Do you understand, Daddy? She's a... <laughs> like she's permanently psychologically damaged. Then you have a boy, the only thing that works. Knock it off! I won't kill you! or personal hygiene. Actually, it's both. But considering that bathing went mainstream in the 1800s and brushing your teeth in the 1900s, isn't it time for something new, like cleaning your nose? After all, your nose is the body's air filter for trapping dirt and germs, the first line of defense against allergens, bacteria, and viruses from getting into your lungs. But how do you clean your nose? With Navage. Navage isn't medicine, it's more like plumbing. Navage uses powered suction to pull saline in one nostril to the very back of the nose where germs can get trapped and multiplied. 
and then out the other nostril, flushing out mucus and microbes so you can breathe better, sleep deeper, snore less, and stay healthier. Join over 2 million others and find out for yourself how refreshing and easy to use Navage is. At Navage.com, Walgreens, CVS, Rite Aid, Bed Bath, and Target. Navage. Clean nose. Healthy life. From the creator of Vikings, Tommy Alec Alperson, comes a new Epic's original series. Got seven names. William H. Bond, Hugh Andrew, and Billy the Kid. Yo, I'll come back for you. Tommy Alec Alperson. You think you know the legend. I don't want to just for you all in the state. But you don't. Believe me, I do not want to kill you. Make sure you get some decent bearing. Billy the Kid premieres Sunday only on Epic. Get the channel or the app. Owner Operators, CAG Truck Capital offers loans for major engine overhauls and truck financing. If you need the cash, you can now qualify for an engine overhaul loan over the phone at 800-932-CASH, 800-932-CASH, or CAGTruckCapital.com. Cummins owners ask about a free two-year warranty. If your big rig engine needs a major overhaul, get a loan over the phone, 800-932-CASH, or apply now at CAGTruckCapital.com. NASCAR roars into Talladega Super Speedway tomorrow for the Geico 500. And Sirius XM takes you there live. Who's going to win? And go inside the car with our exclusive driver to crew channels on the SXM app. Great job, guys. Experience blistering fast speeds. Bubba Wallace is on the charge. And of course, the big one. Everybody's scattering. One car in. It's the Geico 500. Tomorrow at 2 Eastern on Sirius XM, NASCAR Radio, Channel 9, and streaming on the SXM app. Included with all our trials and popular plans. The Bonfire with Big J Okerson and Dan Soder. Can you look up 1980s wrestler Big Gold Cups? Look at those, dude. Nikolai Volkov, Iron Sheik. Mr. Wonderful and the Hulkster, dude. But I remember I had Paul Endorf. You did? Hey, my parents would let me crush Big Gold in nine. <laughs> <laughs> That's not good parenting. <laughs> yeah. The Bonfire. Weeknights at 5 p.m. Eastern on Faction Talk or anytime on the SXM app. Jeff and Larry's Comedy Roundup. My state is not a state that you really want to brag about. We just try to lay low. That's our best outcome if we're not noticed. Because every time, like Ferguson, that whole thing, that was not exactly something that you feel proud of. Uh, two summers ago, I turned on CNN somewhere on the road, and it said Missouri State Senate debates. Now, you'd think the next word would be, uh, you know, health care or right to work laws. No, noodling. Yeah. For those of you who don't know what noodling is, congratulations. You have led a very classy life. But I'm going to tell you what it is. Noodling is when hillbilly people get in muddy rivers like the Mississippi or the Missouri River, and they go and they they get into water about chest high, and then they go along the riverbank with their hands underneath the water, searching for catfish breeding holes. And when they find one, they shove their arm in the hole, they wait for the catfish to bite it, then they yank it out, and they've caught a fish. was not aware that this is illegal in my home state of Missouri. I was also not aware that it is legal in our neighboring state of Oklahoma. I certainly was not aware that we have a Missouri Noodlers Association. CNN sent a young reporter to interview the president of the Missouri Noodlers Association who immediately became my new hero because for his interview on CNN, he chose not to wear a shirt. <laughs> she was clearly petrified of the guy. She actually never seen anyone hold a microphone further away from another human being. She said, sir, I understand you're the president of the Missouri Noodlers Association. Could you please tell us your position on noodling? <laughs> he goes, yeah. Yeah. I'll tell you my position. If I want to shove my arm in a hole and get a fish, you tell me why I can't. So that was the argument for it. And I thought, what is the problem? I don't know. Well, 
they go interview the people against it, and it, it was a, like basically an environmental group, and they go, well, yeah, our problem with it is twofold. Number one, every time they do this, they're just trying to catfish breeding holes. And number two, and more importantly, sometimes these catfish, especially if near a dam, can grow to be 150 to 250 pounds. So, yes, I swear, Google it. So sometimes when the employee shoves his arm in the hole, the hillbilly does not come back up. But I was like, yeah, but let's think that through. What have we gained and what have we lost? Everything. We might have lost Billy Bob, but somebody just got his brand new truck full of push bikes. I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't survive long in the apocalypse because I wear contact lenses. As soon as my prescription runs out, I'm going to make some cannibals real happy. I'll be helpless. My friend says, you got to get LASIK. It'll change your life. No, I'm not putting lasers anywhere near my eyeball. That's my number two phobia in life, is lasers in my eyeball. And my therapist said, one thing you can do for a phobia is go through worst case scenario and that'll help walk you through your fear. I was like, okay, I can do this. Worst case scenario, the lasers explode my eyeballs. And then I'm blind forever with chronic pain in my eyes. I guess it's not that bad. But worst case would be that I then sue the eye doctor and lose. He countersues. He wins. I'm blind, pain, no money. Worst case, I stumble on a dead body. Didn't see it. I'm newly blind. I'm like, wake up, cold man. And now my fingerprints are all over a body. I'm accused of a murder I didn't commit. Sentenced to life in jail. Blind. So I did that exercise and I still don't really want LASIK. Moms have magical powers. I really don't know how. Like, when you think about little kids don't know how to do anything. Nothing. And they're not nice about it. Like you have to do everything for them and they're like little gangsters about it. So they're just like, hey lady, tie it, come on, let's go. The guys are outside, hurry up, toots. They are. Little kids, little gangsters. Like I was just visiting, I went home for my mom's birthday, and I have nephews, I have nephews that are four and seven, okay? And here's the thing, I know this here's some younger people that haven't been around children in a while, but parents, you can back me up on this, grandparents back me up on this. Little, chil little children in the glory years, anything before middle school, if you go to a home where they reside, that's their house, okay? That's like their turf, they're gangsters, that's their turf. If you show up, you better pay respect. You gotta bring tribute, candy, cash, toys, something to unwrap. They expect it, they demand it. The four-year-old will wait for me on the top of the steps like Al Capone and the Untouchables where it's just like. Uncle Steve, what did you bring me? I see empty hands, you left it in the car, right? You're not gonna embarrass me? You're not going to show me respect in my house? I see you on television and I don't get a taste? You don't let me wet my beak? I don't think so. Frankie, burn his car to the ground. Welcome back to Philly. Next time you bring me tribute. <laughs> this is the absolute best. If you get the little guy something he likes. He's like, he looks at me, he's like, Uncle Steve, you show me. But I appreciate the respect you've shown. I know how to return a favor. You ask around, I'm a good friend to have. Come on, let's take a walk. I'm like, where are we going, buddy? There's something I want to show you. And he walks me into the kitchen and 
we stop in front of the refrigerator and he goes, Welcome to my art gallery. <laughs> you like anything? Whatever you want. Pick it out. Look. That's a zombie. A monster truck. How about a dinosaur that's glitter and macaroni? Take it home. God bless. Don't tell anybody where you're going. <laughs> this is how you know you got him a gift that he really loves because he's like, forget it. None of these work. How about this? Custom piece. Whatever you want, I'm going to draw it. Sit down. Did my mom even offer you some apple juice? Did you have a drink? Mom, I'm embarrassed. Uncle Steve needs an apple juice. How about a root beer? I'm a root beer man myself. We'll do a couple shots of apple juice, chase it with a root beer. Mom, make it happen. I need all my art supplies. Yes, the big box of crayons, markers, paints, glitter. You help with the scissors. He'll do scissors. Bring the construction paper. So now everything's spread all out the kitchen table, and he's warming up. He's wearing, it's like, okay, what do you want me to draw? How about this? Ooh, 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 ooh. I know how to do a pumpkin. You want to do a pumpkin? No, 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 no. I got it. Close your eyes. Hold out your hand. Don't move it. Close your eyes. When you open your eyes, you're going to be staring at a turkey. I know. It sounds crazy. It sounds crazy. I didn't believe in myself. But just give me a couple of minutes, right? So then, this is the best. He goes like this. He goes, oh, I got it. Don't move. I'm going to draw you. Never let that happen. Never say yes. Never, ever, never, ever let a child draw you unless you really want to know what you look like because they're, they're too honest to lie. They're too honest to lie. Like, here's your big fat tummy that you always hide with sweaters. You hide with a sweater, but I see it. And these are your sad eyes, your sad, sad eyes ever since you broke up with Karen. You should get back. <laughs> <laughs> the hey, this is Jeff, and if you listen to any other station besides Jeff and Larry's Comedy Roundup, tell them, Larry. Well, Jeff, it's like Cyclops wearing an eye patch. It don't make no sense. <laughs> We all reach tipping points in life. The weight of a low-paying job, unpaid bills, a new family, you can't keep going. That's where My Computer Career can help. In just months, not years, they can help you start a new life as an IT pro, even with no prior experience. Impossible? You learn online from home, and My Computer Career offers lifetime career services to help you find jobs with companies begging for IT pros. Go to mycomputercareer.edu and take the free career evaluation. It's not rocket science. It's mycomputercareer.edu. Tax day is nearly here. And Chanel is stressing. Why do I always wait till the last minute? Her small business needs a bookkeeper to crunch some big numbers. All these spreadsheets make my head spin. None of this adds up. Indeed can help her hire great people fast. I need Indeed. Indeed you do. Our hiring platform instantly connects you with quality candidates whose resumes on Indeed match your job description. Visit Indeed.com slash credit and get $75 towards your first sponsored job. Terms and conditions apply. Time is getting, time is getting on my nerves. I don't feel it. I deserve to have it going by me at this rate. It's not the time itself is bad. It's the way it moves. It makes me mad. And if it wasn't linear, it would be great. Well, I've had it with linear time. It's there everywhere that I go. The time that I am yearning for is not this narrow corridor. Everything just happens in a row. When you're convicted of a crime, the punishment is doing time. The worst crime, the more you have to do. We've all got life without parole, and time is guarding on patrol until our earthly sentences are through. Well, I've had it with linear time. It's there everywhere that I go. The time that I am yearning for is not this narrow corridor where everything just happens in a row. Down and top 
remote control would work just fine. Pausing all the happy stuff, fast forwarding when things are rough, and just before the end, we get rewind. Well, I've had it with linear time. It's there everywhere that I go. The time that I am yearning for is not this narrow corridor where everything just happens in a row. I'm Jeff Foxworthy. Hey, it's Larry the Cable Guy. Yeah. Listen to me and all our buddies on Jeff and Larry's Comedy Roundup. Y'all ready? Woo! Check it out. Thank you very much, sir, for turning on tonight. I play a lot of TV and I play a lot of golf is what I do. Uh, we have golfers here tonight, golfers. Wow, man. I played the other day. You know, you're playing so bad on a hole, you finally just give up and pick the ball up and tell whoever's keeping score, you know, just give me an X. Yeah, yeah by the end of the day, my scorecard looked like I was a really good bowler. I, mean, that's, uh, I have to tell you, I played an amazing course, a great course before I came out. I played Los Angeles Country Club. Oh, my God. It was... Uh, Beautiful. Course so nice, the course had caddies. I've never played a course with caddies before. I'm thinking it's gonna be the best. It's like the pros handing you clubs, telling you the distances. No. No, who do I get for my caddy? No, I have to get the rain man for my caddy, this guy. It's totally clueless. I'm like, how far away from the pit of my he's like about, about, about 122 yards. Get that plate that flame 122 yards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wanna hand me my driver? I'm an excellent driver. Excellent driver. I just got back from Texas where I played. Wow, very different to golf in Texas. It's the only place where they have gun racks on the golf carts, folks. That's a, and I wish I was making that up, too. I swear, I swear, I was playing with this good old boy named Earl. I'm like, Earl, what's that gun rack for? He goes, oh, hell, you know me. I slice the ball. Sometimes I slice it into the high brush, and it'll flush a couple quail out. <laughs> Come on with two birds, that's a good day at the golf course, anyway. <laughs> it's Opie Earl. I love the Earls of the world. Earls are everywhere. Uh, they mostly re reside in Texas, but uh, I'm sure there's some Earls here in Minneapolis area. You know what I'm talking about? They're usually those good old boys with that big old gut. They wear that white straw cowboy hat. They curl every girl's sugar pants. Hey, sugar pants. <laughs> I always get stuck behind Earl's at the airport, at the metal detector. Because they set it off, but they never know why. Yet they pitch a fit the whole way up to it and talk to everybody in line behind them like, Oh, Christ. You got dang melter. I set this on the job every time. I don't know why I gotta go through it. Like, I got a bomb on me. <laughs> you got a pretty big gut there, pal. What the hell are you packing? You know? They go through it, and it goes off, and then they flip out all good group, so I guess we all got a beep, 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 son of a bitch, there it is. I don't understand. I'm like, you got a satellite dish holding your pants up, for Christ's sake. Jesus, do the math, Earl. It's nice to be here. What can I tell you? Last week, last week I was uh, in Las Vegas. Yes, uh, performing at the MGM Grand Hotel, opening for Dennis Miller. Yeah, and tonight, I'm in a mall. Working. I think next week I'm at an international house of pancakes, and then I start mime school. So. I can tell you about myself. I'm a big sports fan. I don't know if you guys are sports fans or not. I am a huge sports fan. Oh, are you like me though? Catch me on the weekend dead set from the TV. Remote control in this hand. Chips. Beer. Catheter. <laughs> 
get ticked off, I'm watching the games, baby. No fun right like now. And I watch everything. Football, baseball, basketball, golf, hockey, tennis, and that's over at ESPN. 24-hour sports channel, everything they show there. Even the stupid sports. You know, they have them late at night. You better ready to turn the TV off, go to bed. They always come on with, stay tuned for midget billiards. <laughs> You're like, all right, what the hell? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> You gotta see how they get up to the table, you know. It might be kind of cool, but you guys doing this. <laughs> we don't know, is what I'm saying. What was on the other night? I watched uh, Women's Bodybuilding was on the other night. Yeah, and I watched that. And, um... Yuck. I, know. I don't think I could date a girl whose bag is bigger than mine, you know what I'm saying? Let alone introduce her to the family. No, because you know she would be posy, you know? Be like, Mom, Dad, uh, this is Cindy. <laughs> Your mom's like, you want to get her out of here? She's scaring the dog. Get her out of here. Yeah. And what kind of gifts do you get people like this, too? You like for the birthday and stuff? Honey, it's a blue sapphire pendant to match the veins in your neck. <laughs> Pretty. Get this. During the show, they did like a feature piece on a group of bodybuilders in Los Angeles that are blind. Blind bodybuilding. Bodybuilders that can't see. How does this work exactly? I can see it now. I'd be like, oh yeah, I'm spotting you. <laughs> Thanks for getting that, folks. That's a vital joke to get tonight. Let me tell you. Uh, I did that joke one night in Little Rock, Arkansas. <laughs> Nothing, baby. Oh, these people were dumber than a bag of hammers that night. Let me tell you. Oh yeah, then I tell them a booger joke. They're like, oh, you're the king of comedy. Oh, woo! There'll be a couple guys here tonight going, I wonder what that booger joke is. <laughs>
Okay, I just rang the doorbell and beat on the door, and they have her address wrong. So I'm getting out of here before these people wake up.
Flintstone vitamin out of your car. You can go tend all the threes and fours and such for the insane such ridiculous numbers. I couldn't bring myself to say 10, though, because I had heard the worst pain a human can endure is getting the femur bone cracked in half. And I don't know if that's true, but I thought, if it is, they have exclusive rights to 10. And now I'm thinking, what was I worried about? Is there like a femur ward at the hospital? They would have heard about me and hobbled into my room. Who the hell? I was coming off the road the other day. I stopped at McDonald's. I got a soda. One dollar, eight cents. Pull up to the window. The girl looks at me. She said, did you have the soda? Yes, I did. She said, well, the guy in front of you paid for you. Now, I know how this is supposed to work. I'm supposed to pay for the people behind me. They pay for the people behind me. That makes us a better world somehow. Except I look in the rearview mirror, and I've got an SUV behind me with about eight kids. And I'm not paying 85 bucks for a soda. But she can literally look down on the one she's looking down and she's like, well, the guy in front of you paid for you. I'm like, well, if I see him, I'll say thanks and left. <laughs> so I was telling my wife about this. She said, well, Jay, you're supposed to pay for the people behind you. I know that. I'm not going to do that. She said, we can afford it. That's not the point. So well, don't you believe in karma? Yeah, I believe in karma. I just got a free soda. <laughs> That's karma telling me I'm not that bad of a guy. That's what that is. I drove up here. I, I fly every once in a while. That's but it, I come from a very rural part of the country, and the closest major airport to where I live is like two and a half hours away. So this one time I was going to be gone for a few weeks. I didn't want my truck just sitting there racking up parking charges at the airport. So what I did is I went to a local army base, and they flew me out to the larger airport. Now the plane they fly you out is one of those really small Cessnas, like those six eight C planes. You know. And I'm looking at this, I've never flown on one of those before. I'm like, man, I don't even know if that thing's safe. As we're in line, I hear the woman in front of me say 140. I don't know what that means. But she gets to know what she's doing. I step up there, she's like, uh, are you flying to St. Louis today? Yes, I am. She said, well, how much do you weigh? <laughs> Why do you need to know my weight? She said, because we board the plane according to the passenger's weights. That way, the wings stay balanced. She said, but the first thing I need to do is to get your bags. No, the first thing you need to do is to get her back over here because there's no way she weighs 140. I'm not trying to embarrass anybody here, but I'm not going to wind up a story on the news because she doesn't want to admit she slides through Burger King every once in a while. That's not my problem, you know, you know. 
So now I have to stand on the side and like do all the calculate all the lies that everybody else is telling because I'm afraid the weight's going to be off on 140. I don't think you're 140. No. The guy walks over, he's like, yeah, I probably weigh 175. Yeah, in high school you weighed 175. And his like, Mr. Thorsby, how much do you weigh? Apparently 844 pounds. Vikings. Tell me you're looking out for someone. Comes a new Epics original series. That's the names. William H. Bond, Jack, and Billy the Kid. Don't be on the I'll come back for you. You think you know the legend. There are wanted posters for you all over the state. But you don't. Believe me, I do not want to kill you. Make sure you get some decent bearing. Billy the Kid. Premiere Sunday. Only on Epics. Get the channel or the app. This is Fogelman, ready to hustle for that muscle. Membership numbers at Sly's Gym have been racking up. 22 people have signed up for 6 a.m. Buns of Steel? Now he needs more certified trainers to do all the heavy lifting. I'm going to have to bulk up my staff. Indeed can help him hire great people fast. I need Indeed. Indeed you do. Our hiring platform instantly connects you with quality candidates who... Your job description. Visit Indeed.com slash... Terms and conditions apply. Success is picking up extra shifts, and now you want to be the boss. Success is getting your foot in the door. Now you want to take the next step. Success looks different to everyone. And for more than 75 years, University of Maryland Global Campus has been helping working adults like you succeed again. Choose from 90-plus degree, specialization, and certificate programs with online and hybrid courses. Apply by May 31st and pay no application fee. Learn more at umgc.edu. Certified to operate by CHEV. I'm very jealous of your town. Cause this is a nice town. I live in Los Angeles and it ain't like this. I don't really, I'm from Seattle, Washington. I just moved to LA for TV and I don't fit in real good in LA. It's, it hasn't been working out for me. Cause like I feel like LA, like Seattle responsible is like, I have never been late on my rent, you know? But like LA responsible is like, I have never owed my Coke dealer money. Like that's. <laughs> Very, so I feel like LA is a fancy nightclub and I'm like a guy in jean shorts. Like, am I on the list? Stop being like us immediately? All right. It's very strange. I, um, I'm not as confident as I look. Uh, I say that because evidently there's something about my look that people who have never even met me want to put me in my place. Yesterday I was at a coffee shop here, and uh, I, I'm in line, it's like a hip coffee shop, you know? And uh, this cute girl gets in line behind me, and I turn to her and I go, hey, how's it going? She goes, pretty good, douchebag. I didn't say anything. I'm sorry, did my face annoy you? I don't understand. And I, like, she put in mice into it, and after a year, like, how do I still have no mice? <laughs> <laughs> Joke ends. Not for everybody. And that's fine. A lot of you are on board. A lot of these jokes will start out. It's sort of like a, a raffle of bits of my own brain, I feel like sometimes. Because like it starts out and I'm like 203, and everyone's like, yep, we got it. We're still on board. And then I'm like, 856. And it's like, oh, so close. <laughs> well, there's like two people in the corner. They're like, we never win anything. This is so cool. <laughs> The official 
Marshall, Comedy Station of the United Nations. Really? Well, maybe. You have selected the ultimate power. Please deposit seven dollars. A really funny game that I came up Please with. Please wait while your transaction is processed. It's all about crazy if you would like a receipt, press refund now. Got to laugh at this stuff. I mean, go crazy. And I've got a ton of experience playing with Thank my friends and family, pleasure. even the crazy Sorry, ones. Hi. So I hope you're going to enjoy it too. You can find it and the expanded. New text message from Christopher Carson. So what happened here? Let Bambi run your HR. Go to Bambi.com. Come on! Now I'm stuck with a soapy vehicle and seven dollars for that. The little lights even went up. Man! Free. Get Upside App now to earn cash back every time you buy gas. Use promo code DRIVER for 25 cents a gallon or more cash back on your first tank. You can cash out anytime right to your bank, to PayPal, or an e-gift card for Amazon and other brands. Just download the free Get Upside App and use promo code DRIVER to earn 25 cents a gallon or more on your first tank. That's code DRIVER. Whether you're neck deep in work, getting lost in a book, or well, crap. guests. Transform your space with the Ambient On Demand Collection on the SXM app. Create the ideal atmosphere with channels featuring smooth jazz, laid back country, now I got a soapy vehicle. classics, chill out, and more. The Ambient On Demand Collection, now at the top of the SXM app. The Moon Tower JFL Comedy Festival presents Dance Theory. If you're a white guy under 25 covered in tattoos, covered in tattoos, guess what? I'm probably not afraid of you. If you're over 70 and you have tattoos, I am terrified of you. Live stand-up comedy event Thursday, April 21st at the Paramount Theater in Austin, Texas. You see an old man with, like, wrinkled skin and a bulldog on his forearm? That's a man that's watched death. Tickets are available at MoontowerComedyFestival.com. Sponsored by Sirius XM. It's Jeff and Larry's Comedy Roundup. Well, yeah, you know, there might be some PETA people in the room. <laughs> you know those PETA people. They're awfully sensitive. Yeah. <laughs> 
they see a blind homeless man with a seeing eye dog and they go, oh, I hope that dog eats. Really excited. And for some of you, I don't know if it's because of me or because you're just happy to be watching something other than your children tonight. I nailed that? Yeah. I, uh, I have two kids. I have a second grader and a fourth grader. And let me just find out now, how many people have kids? Clap if you have kids. Clap if you have kids. How many of you want more? Exactly. Seemed like a good idea at the time, right? It's a lot of work. It's very stressful. People don't have kids yet. You don't understand. It's like when they were both in diapers, that was very stressful because I was a stay-at-home dad. Yeah. Well, my kids didn't stay home. They went to daycare. But I stayed home. That was very stressful knowing at the end of the day, they'd be back. I get friends who are like, hey, enjoy this stage. It's going to be over before you know it. Don't blink. I'm walking around blinking. I'm like, I just can't end fast enough. What are you talking about? I couldn't wait to get them into kindergarten. But as parents, you're always learning. I don't know what I'm doing half the time. I'm always learning. Like, I didn't realize when they start kindergarten, before they started school, you got to go to this orientation like two months before. So they ask you questions like, so where is your child at academically? Uh, the beginning? Am I supposed to be doing something these last few years? I thought I'd bring them to you. You take it from here. I've just been waiting for the free daycare to kick in. What I'm trying to tell you women is, is get married as close to your death as possible. Men actually get better with age. It's biological. You want to know what happens as you get older? All of a sudden, the TV commercials start talking to you. Right now, you don't hear them. One day, you'll be sitting around, it's like, are you a male over the age of 40? That's, that's me, what's going on? Is everything okay? Do you not have as much energy as you used to have? No, I'm exhausted, what is it? Do you still print stuff? Yes, I do! You might have a treatable condition called low T. Low, t low testosterone. This is like gluten in Santa Claus. It doesn't exist. This is what happens to men as we get older. It's natural. And they talk about it like it's a bad thing. Low T is the greatest thing to happen to men. is a blessing. High tea destroys lives. <laughs> Nothing bothers low T, man. I'm driving. Somebody flips me off in traffic. Low T guy just keeps going. <laughs> I go out on a date. I don't think she likes me. Great. I'll get eight hours of sleep tonight. <laughs> you want to be happy? Lower your bar. We'll lower our T. Let's meet halfway. We can do it.
And it didn't work really well for that? Oh, it knocked you out. Oh, knocked you out. So you're just completely out. Is your husband here right now? No. Ex. <laughs> 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 your ex-husband? <laughs> Sorry about this. <laughs> I, I wish I had some number on the wall for you to knock you out. You seem like a good sport though, and at least it knocked you out of your work in the game and never know so much. So can you get a good doctor, right? So you know. Ask you this. What's that? You want to give me the name of the game? Alright, I'm going to go to Euro B. <laughs> I've lost complete control of these ladies. I will be in that place. Love them, say that. Come on, put them up there. Go ahead. Tuck your penis behind your legs and stay in the mirror. <laughs> wow. I tell you, I was doing stupid stuff, though. I'm laying there, trying to pee in the pee jug while it's still inside the craft mag adjustable bed. Making a mess. If you want to know what that's like, next time you pump gas, hold the nozzle up a foot away from the car. <laughs> Nurse comes in the room, unclips the pee jug, hands it to me, I'm laying in bed with it. She's trying to give me advice how to use it. I'm not kidding. She goes, why don't you lay there and act natural? <laughs> They're really guys. When's the last time you went into the gym and laid down on the tile of the pee? You're laying down and you're peeing. There's a good chance your pants are still zipped. Because <laughs> if you can't use the jug, they give you that temporary catheter. That tube is huge. It doesn't match the physics at all. Man. My nurse mentioned the catheter to me. She went back in my room with a tube that would be stuck in flippers blow hole. She walked in with it. I'm backing up on the bed. I go, what kind of rotor rooter dick killer is that for, lady? I'm here for an arm injury. I don't have a hair clog in my urethra. 27 minutes later, she pulls it out like she's starting her nine horse Johnson outboard motor. <laughs> So I cried about it, made him walk me, embarrassing as hell, I got that open back prison teddy on. Man, life sucks. The one time I'm actually dressed for anal sex, I'm not up for it. What the hell they make you wear? I hit that back. Ah, this one isn't working. I'm manually washing. Down at the I, I shrank so fast I felt like I was backing away from the urinal. Here, here. <laughs> I'm just wasted on the dumb girl. They're telling me to run my hand under. his schedule and uh, she came over and she walked in and she sat down on my couch and she stayed <laughs> now some of you don't understand why that's even funny <laughs> but I did not invite her over I invited her child over to play with my child because I'm busy. I only have one kid. You're supposed to have two so they can play together. Plus, in case one's an idiot, you have somewhere else to live when you get old. Okay. That's... It is what it is. Right? That's why a whole bunch of people moved to Florida because they stuck out completely. You think those gates are for their safety? No, it's to keep the dumb kids from coming to visit. She stayed. Now, listen, our parents would just drop us off. And not even, really. You'd be like, uh, at Thursday night, you'd be like, Mom, can I spend the night at Tuesday's house? She'd be like, oh, yeah, I'll rate your bus pass. See you Saturday. <laughs> they didn't care. I 
I'm busy. I don't, Louise, I know you don't understand busy sometimes because you're young and you, and, and I, I'm saying all this with love. I'm trying to help you understand that sometimes time is the most precious commodity. I don't have time to do a lot of stuff. I don't have time. Like, that's how you get in trouble because you have too much time. Your threesomes and all that weird sex stuff, you know? Listen, I don't have time for that. If there was another woman in bed with my husband and I, I'd be like, you got this covered because I got things to do. I'm busy. We're busy. <laughs> that's not a sex joke. That's a time management joke. By the way, all I want to do is sleep. Sometimes if we sleep and have sex at the same time, it's like, my favorite position is awake. Um, I don't even want to get into that stuff. It is weird to talk about that stuff here. Are you looking? I had horrible relationships. I could never let go of old relationships. You know, when a woman broke up with me, I would give her two years to change her mind. I wouldn't stop driving by an old girlfriend's house until the courts told me I had to. Just pathetic. And God forbid I run into an ex-girlfriend somewhere. Oh, hey, you know, we used to sleep together. Come on, let's do it again. This close to peeing on her. Come on, please. You said you'd always love me. Come on. You know, I just hated dating. I dread, you know, if you're out on a date tonight, good for you. I hope you're having fun. You know, dating's nice. It's great. You know, you still have hope. Good. You know, I just hate it. I think we should change the rules of dating. If you're out with somebody and you're not having fun, you should be able to get out of it. This should be like date insurance you can buy. If dinner sucks, you call an 800 number, they come out and tow that person away. Just strap on the chain and back up the truck. There she goes. All right, now. Bye-bye. One old girlfriend called me up and invited me to her wedding. She said, oh, no, all my old boyfriends are going to be there. And the nominees are... I don't get that. Every woman I've ever dated has told me, you know, I'm going to change my identity. You know, I... I'm going undercover. You'll never find me. I just had horrible dates. I was a bad dater, and I dated bad women. I mean, I really just mean women. Awful, horrible, you know. Every woman I ever met would not cheat on her boyfriend, unless, of course, I was your boyfriend. And then I hold the record for going to the most parties with a date, leaving alone, you know. Like, more of my friends slept with my girlfriends than I did. I really was just more of a pimp for my guys. That's really it. Hey, who's Dave dating? I'm a little horny tonight. Oh. You can have her, okay. It's hard, it's hard following your dreams. I'm, here's one thing I found out about following your dreams, guys. The higher your dreams are, the lower your credit score will be. Here's a direct correlation between us two. <laughs> That's right, if you have good credit, you ain't trying hard enough. That's it, I'm telling you right now. And here's the thing, I used to have creditors call me all the time. Every two hours, Capital One would call me. And I was like, all right, check me. So I started calling them every two hours. <laughs> Just to remind them how much money I owe. I got all day. I get the same guy every single time because I has an extension. So, <laughs> we're like, hey man, listen, I know I just called, but there's been some new developments. <laughs> yeah, there have I have I don't know how to tell you this, but I just bought a time machine on Craigslist. <laughs> so I'm gonna go back to 2001 and uh. <laughs> You've been great to work with. Uh, I really appreciate our time together. Uh, oh, he got fired up then. Really, Mr. Harris, $475. Why don't you just pay your bills? Just pay your bills. So, like, if everybody paid their bills, you wouldn't have a job home, Slice. Like, I, I'm on your side, boo. Listen, listen, hold on, I got an idea. I got an idea. I figured, all right, listen, I figured it out. Here's what we'll do. I'll call you back in two hours. I'll, 
Look, I'll take you out to lunch, man. I got a card we can put it on. <laughs> If the local tattoo parlor runs specials on your sister's name, you might be listening to Jeff and Larry's Collie Roundup on Sirius XM 97. Well, I've done that. I had one of her sandwiches yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> You ever wonder what makes a comedian a comedian? Well, that's what we try to figure out on A Comic Mind. Hey, this is Jeff Foxworthy. Join me for A Comic Mind as I go inside the heads of some of my favorite comedians. I am going to be talking to the multi-talented and very, very funny Charlie Barrett. You can listen to Jeff Foxworthy's A Comic Mind on the SXM app anytime you want. Free for most subscribers. Download it today and start listening outside the car. Jeff and Larry's Comedy Roundup. What's Philo? It's the easiest, most affordable way to stream more than 60 channels of live TV with thousands of hours of movies and shows on demand from networks like VH1, MTV, BET, TLC, Discovery, Lifetime, and AMC, Hallmark, and Nickelodeon. Watch all the hit shows in one spot, like Yellowstone, Love and Hip Hop Atlanta, 90 Day Fiance, Tyler Perry's Sisters, and SpongeBob SquarePants, just to name a few. Plus, you'll also get an unlimited DVR that lets you save as much as you want for a whole year. Binging anytime and anywhere has never been simpler. And the best part is that you get all this for just $25 a month. No contracts, no commitments, no hassles. Just a better way to watch TV. With Philo, everyone can watch. Go to philo.tv, that's P-H-I-L-O.tv, and use promo code WATCH to get 50% off your first month. God, I wish I could dance on the whole again. Success is picking up extra shifts, and now you want to be the boss. Success is getting your foot in the door. Now you want to take the next step. Success looks different to everyone. And for more than 75 years, University of Maryland Global Campus has been helping working adults like you succeed again. Choose from 90-plus degree, specialization, and certificate programs with online and hybrid courses. Apply by May 31st and pay no application fee. Learn more at umgc.edu. Certified to operate by Chef. Every time Fish plays Madison Square Garden, everybody gets Trey. It's a must-hear event for fans across the country. I feel like I'm at home. I can put a bed in that place. Catch all four of this week's MSG shows airing daily on the band's exclusive Series XM channel. It's going to be so cool. Now through Sunday at noon and 9 p.m. Eastern, along with highlights every hour throughout the weekend with the SXM app on Fish Radio. This really is good radio here. Channel 29. If you like comedy and sunshine, then you won't want to miss Netflix is a Joke, The Festival. Featuring more than 100 comedians in 25 iconic venues, The Festival will be taking over Los Angeles from April 28th through May 8th. Live comedy shows, podcasts, special fan experiences, and much, much more. Don't delay. Make your plans today. Head to NetflixIsAJokeFest.com for tickets and more information. This festival will be no joke. Jeff and Larry's Comedy Roundup, Series XM, 97. I realized what I thought was somewhat of an epiphany, but it's just an old absolute truth. And that is, women rule the world. <laughs> This ain't a pep rally. It's an intervention. Single guys don't know that because single guys are idiots. Married men know it's true. They just don't know when it was they lost their sovereignty. Well, gentlemen, our research shows that women are raised much like ninjas. They've got this mission, right? A secret mission to take power away from you incrementally each and every day. They're stealing a little bit more until you're right. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Hillary Clinton. If you think back to the time she took you to the mall, right? 
The first time you go shopping with her, you're excited just to hang out, right? Now she's going to parade you around like a show pony, endlessly and aimlessly with no intention to buy anything. Now, here's where rationale and logic kick in for you, because you have it. And you think, well, this is, this is, uh, this is stupid. <laughs> well, it's genius. Because this is an exercise in psychosis. A mental breakdown. Same premise as a cowboy busting a bronco, right? She's done taking you out to wear you out. It's what we do to those guys at Guantanamo Bay. You know the old men you see sitting in the middle of the mall? Those were 23-year-old feral men a half hour early. My wife will do a hypnotic trick where she will show me outfit after outfit after outfit until finally I've got the mental capacity of Carl from Sling Blade. I'm like, I like the way you shop. I'm going to food court and get some mustard back, all right, you. discovered this could be one of the greatest aphrodisiacs known boys listen if you want to get the deal done tonight all you have to do is talk like Carl in a nerd get them riches off ridiculous as that sounds to you at the moment there's at least three guys going to try that tonight and one of them's going to get lucky isn't that right Hillary ladies and gentlemen Flushing Town Hall is proud to present Jed Alexandro! the Jim Gaffigan show, by the way. I appreciate it. And if you didn't watch, that just means you're a jerk. But no, but thank you if you did watch, because there are so many television shows and episodes of television shows we could and should be and should be watching. It's amazing any of us are here right now. It's kind of overwhelming. DVR, on demand. Sometimes I open my Netflix and I'm like, I don't think I can do it. I'm not even gonna make a dent here. And I know there's pressure. We all feel it, because we've developed excuses for our friends, like we're dealing with debt collectors. You watch Game of Thrones? I'm a little behind. Like, give me a week. My wife had a dumb baby. And it's never ending. You finish that show, now you have to watch this show, and then you have to. No, now I need to learn how to read again. I need to sound out some words and see if I can read. Have you read a physical book lately? Not on a tablet or a laptop, an actual book. You feel like you're Abe Lincoln. Oh, it's made of wood. Hope it doesn't catch on fire. When does this have to be back at the museum? Because we're all binge-watching. Remember when they first introduced the idea of binge-watching? I was like, how pathetic. I'm just going to watch an episode or two. I haven't showered in a week. I'm a grandfather. 
I miss my own funeral. I binge watch shows that I don't even like. Well, this is pretty bad. I guess I watched five more episodes. I watched every episode of True Blood, and I'm not even gay. I know some of you are like, Jim, watching True Blood doesn't mean you're gay. That's because you're gay. It's the number one cause of gayness. My friends don't understand. They're like, when do you watch? You have five kids. I ignore them. I can't go to that recital. I'm re-watching West Wing. It's embarrassing how I consume television. There are nights when I've told myself, all right, one more season. <laughs> I'm going to bed. I mean, come on. It's hard to stop. You see the ending. You want the accomplishment, right? Oh, you ran a 10K? Yeah, I finished Mad Men. I did it. I'm a little sore, but I did it. I'm a television athlete. I'm a athlete. It's strange when you get done watching an entire series. You don't know what to do with yourself. You know, I haven't been this lost since the ending of Lost. Should I go to a bar? I don't know if I remember how to talk. I can tell you from experience, it's not so bad. <laughs> and after two and a half years of failed auditions, they dropped me. Well, not technically. They put me on what they called the back burner. I think that is a poor choice of words, because I own a back burner, and it is still used occasionally. I would still return to my back burner's emails if my back burner had a computer. <laughs> hey man, how you doing? Hey, pretty good back burner, how you doing? Pretty good, just want to let you know I got some soup on here for you. <laughs> Sweet, what kind of soup? Get some tomato too. Oh, I love tomato too. Put some grilled cheese in there, maybe some pepper, it's the best. Yeah, I love tomato too. too. I love you. Oh, I didn't mean to say I love you. What's worse, Will? Look at my back burner, my head's here, thanks for that. Because we're recording this, I want to state for the record that I have no ill will towards my agents. They're great men. And I say that because it's true and also just in case they want to take me back. <laughs> I am ready. I am willing. I'll be staying at a nice motel in L.A. Just follow the smell. <laughs> I'll give you a sample, hot dog. I promise your grandparents that we be a Happier than we are making this. Depending on your age, your grandparents, when they were young, might have come along with them even before television. Television came around 1948. Most televisions weren't in their homes until the mid to late 50s, even. So, some of the, my grandparents and yours, when they were growing up, there was no television. No, no weather channel. No meteorologist. So late at night, when they got sleepy, they just went to bed. And then the next morning, the next morning, when they woke up and looked out the window, they go, well, damn, it's right. See? See? Okay. See? Okay. They would worry. But they would worry in the moment. They would worry if it happened. All Americans have always worried about something. The previous generations didn't worry six months ahead of time. Not us. We need that 10-day forecast. 
we want to know how cold it's going to be two and a half weeks from now. And this thing you know, we will start repeating this to our friends or our co-workers. But, uh, did you hear the news? It's going to be real cold. It's going to be January. Huh? Well, hell yeah, that's the whole winter. I'm in mean, I mean, My wife is right about one thing. Literally one thing. Uh, and that is violence in movies. I Before I had kids, I could watch it, but now I don't know about you guys. I can't watch any movie where a child is hurt. Everybody's insane. No parent. Everyone, I don't know how. Who's watching these things? Every other show on Netflix is this dark, mysterious show set in a Norwegian forest with giant trees and big, long roots where people are in there in, like, raincoats, and all of a sudden, in the first 30 seconds, it's like, disemboweled child. I'm like, dude! I'm like, who told me to watch this? Netflix was, like, 98% approval. For who? People without kids, I can't watch them. Like, even some of my favorite movies of all time, like Jaws, my favorite movie of all time. It used to be, to me, this story of, like, three adventurous men who went out to hunt this great white shark. And then I had kids, and now it's just a story of a single mom who watches her son get eaten alive on the beach. alive on the beach. I don't know about you, I can't get past that. That movie's over right there. When Mrs. Kittner watches Alex get chewed up, I'm like, I done. A horrible. And you know she's a single mom in the pain, because she slaps Brody. Where's the husband? He's nowhere to be seen. So obviously she's a single mom who just had her son eaten by a shark. Honestly, it's a lawsuit movie, because they knew that shark was in the water. It's got to be some kind of correspondence saying that Murray Hamilton knew the sharks in there. It's a lawsuit movie. It should have been called Aaron Brockovich 2, The Alex Kittner Tragedy. By Jaws 2, she owns the island. It's not even Amity anymore. It's Kittnerville. Jaws 3, she hires a hitman to go and kill every guy on the island. Jaws 4 is a ghost story uh, where Alex, is, Alex comes back. That one, that one doesn't do that well. Uh, Jaws 5, she, uh, she joins the Fast and the Furious crew, and they, they merge. Hey, Jeff, my buddy just got married to one of them drive through chaplains. They got married in the front seat, had the honeymoon in the back seat, and the reception was open trunk. <laughs> And folks, if you're looking for more quality entertainment like that, keep it on Jeff and Larry's Comedy Roundup, Sirius XM 97. Taking me 30 years to write that joke. Previously, on Larry the Cable Guy's Weekly Roundup. I was not much of a ladies' man in high school. I wasn't very good in football. I was too little and chubby. <laughs> I'm glad to see you've grown out of it. The Larry the Cable Guy's Weekly Roundup. Hey, this is Jeff Foxworthy. Did you know that you can listen to Larry the Cable Guy's Weekly Roundup on demand? At home, or wherever you take the phone on the Sirius XM app. Wait a minute, that's me. Jeff and Larry's Comedy Roundup, Sirius XM 97. Owner Operators, CAG Truck Capital offers loans for major engine overhauls and truck financing. If you need the cash, you can now qualify for an engine overhaul loan over the phone at 800-932-CASH, 800-932-CASH, or CAG Truck Capital.com. Cummins owners ask about a free two-year warranty. If your big rig engine needs a major overhaul, get a loan over the phone. 800-932-CASH or apply now at CAGTruckCapital.com. Susan, it's so great to finally be able to get together again. Oh, it sure is. And I really appreciate you picking up the bill. I'm happy to. I've got the extra cash. Since we've all been driving so much more again, I've been using GetUpside, the free gas app that pays you cash back for every gallon of gas you buy. Wait a minute. Are you saying you actually get paid cash when you buy gas with the GetUpside app? Yes. I get real cash back every time I buy gas. Does that actually add up to anything? I'll make 200 to $300 this year. Wow. That's serious extra cash. I'm downloading the free GetUpside app now. Download the free GetUpside app now to earn cash back every time you buy gas. Use promo code DRIVER for 25 cents a gallon or more cash back on your first tank. You can 
Cash out anytime right to your bank, to PayPal, or an e-gift card for Amazon and other brands. Just download the free GetUpside app and use promo code DRIVER. Turn 25 cents a gallon or more on your first tank. That's code DRIVER. I'm Bob Crawford, historian and bassist for the Ava Brothers. In the next episode of my audio documentary, Concerts of Change, hear the incredible planning, behind-the-scenes stories, and impact of Live Aid, featuring interviews with Bob Geldof, The Hooters, George Thurgood, and more. He jumped on stage and went completely into the Mick Jagger routine in rehearsal. You can hear the full series of Sirius XM Volumes, Concerts of Change, the soundtrack of human rights, right now on demand on the SXM app, free for most subscribers. This is Burt Kreischer, Ray Romano, Ray Bamford, Dion Cole, Gabriel Iglesias, and this is What a Joke with Papa and Fortune. So What a Joke is the name of the show? This is such an iconic radio show. How great is this show? I listen to y'all like almost every morning. You hear that, Netflix? Is this, is this a direct line to Netflix? <laughs> I like this show. I just like when people take comedy serious. Listen to What a Joke on Netflix is a joke radio. Channel 93. 93! Just look at Channel 93. Netflix is a joke radio. Jeff and Larry's Comedy Roundup. Series 18, 97. I did go on Pinterest a lot when I was planning my wedding. And I will say, uh, there's a lot of great stuff out there. People uh, get very intense when they're planning a wedding or planning an event. Uh, people who love to look at Pinterest are like, have you been on Pinterest? I'm like, yes, I've been looking at it. Yeah. Uh, uh, they're so excited about it. People would say to me, oh my gosh, you should totally put in the search engine um, XYZ, right? They always had something to talk about. Or they'd ask me, what's your theme? And I... Hello. You better cut my baby eyeball off. What? I can't go back to her again. Why? Because she's had a couple of strokes. She didn't bother to tell me that. And then her eyesight's not as good as it was. And her husband was trying to find the other dog. And just, she had a hold of his face. And he jerked from her and nipped it right under his eye. Didn't cut his eye, did it? Didn't cut his eye, but it cut his eyelid. Goodness! So, yeah, he's got a chunk of, of where it just... It didn't, like, split it open. You could just tell a chunk of... Piece of skin off. Oh. I know. Poor baby. I'm just not ready to just start doing it myself. Yeah, you're going to have to learn how to. And, I, and she's really good. I felt bad for her because, you know, she, she was like, she apologizing. But I, I was worried because she said she had a couple of strokes and her eyes not as good. It was like, great. I was really trying to hold him. Then let's not be pointing scissors at my dog's eye. I know. I'm surprised she didn't take his eye out. It bled, but it's bloody, but it's not. I guess I'm going to see if I got some that, more than antibiotic stuff to put on it at home. Now you got him on an antibiotic. Now you got to take him and get him a get him a treat. Go get him some ice cream. I brought some treats. Mama brought some. Here, baby. Get him some ice cream. Jeez. Oh. Uh, yeah, man, yeah. That, that no wonder the dog can't stand having his hair cut. I know. Cut. It's cut every time. I know. One person cuts his penis, the other cuts I his guess, eye. I guess nobody's working with this sonic. The lady wants to answer the slides, so I'm going on. Ah. Two cars. Two cars here. They can't answer the lot. Yeah, I know. Minimum wage, minimum effort. Definitely. So mommy's in another fret now. Oh, I'm gonna start him on antibiotic because we know what happened there. Yeah, I know. Um, and she didn't cut him near nothing like last time. But still. Uh, Alright, well I'm okay. fixing to pull into this place here. Alright, I'll see you later. Alright, go pamper your dog. I know, poor baby. <laughs> Huh. Bye. Bye. All that, get it home, dry it out, and then you're going to take those pine cones and you're going to fashion them into owls. <laughs> Just fashion them 
them into owls, short owls, tall owls, fat or skinny, doesn't matter. Just let those owls be themselves. Now, once you've got enough of those owls, back to the woods you go. You're going to need acorns for eyes. Now, while you're there, look for actual owls' nests because you can take the eggs and bring them home. And what you're going to do is put an owl egg in every owl. So when your guests visit the buffet and they come back to the table, as they're eating their food, a baby owl will peck its way out of the egg. Just peck, 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 till its little baby owl face comes out. And your guest will have the opportunity to say, hey, guess who got married today? And the baby owl will say, who? just put fresh cut flowers on the table. All right, I adopted as a single mom, so I still get to date, which is nice. I'm not like most women. I don't like big guys. All these women like these big guys to protect them. I like them little. In case a fight breaks out, I got a chance. <laughs> Yeah, basically I date guys I think I can take. I don't like hairy guys, though. So I tried it. I dated a little hairy guy once. He'd take a bath at my house. Look like the sewer backed up. All that fur floating on the water. Just wanted to snap a cigarette butt into there. Then I'd have to wait for the tub to dry and vacuum. I'd write things. Welcome. On a relationship, not a plumbing problem. change the station. Sing along. Honey got a booty like pow, pow, pow. Dad, stop it calling Mr. Flintstone because I can make it bad rocks. Why are you doing that? I blame it on the out, out, out. So stupid. I said, I got one less problem without you. <laughs> Why are you poking me? I go, can't keep my hands to myself.
We all reach tipping points in life. The weight of a low-paying job, unpaid bills, a new family. You can't keep going. That's where My Computer Career can help. In just months, not years, they can help you start a new life as an IT pro, even with no prior experience. Impossible? You learn online from home, and My Computer Career offers lifetime career services to help you find jobs with companies begging for IT pros. Go to mycomputercareer.edu and take the free career evaluation. It's not rocket science. It's mycomputercareer.edu. You run a small business. Who's running your HR? Do you have an HR manager? When's the last time you had an HR audit? Do your employees take workplace safety training? My last question to you is this. What are you waiting for? One complaint against your company can turn your world upside down. I'm Alan Jones, and I created Bambi specifically for small business. All so you can put your HR on autopilot. With Bambi's HR autopilot, you'll automate the most important HR practices, like HR policies, workplace training, and employee feedback. And you'll get a dedicated HR manager, not for 80 grand a year, but yes, for $99 a month. We're here to help you navigate the most complex parts of your HR. Available by phone, email, and real-time chat. And here's what I'm the most proud of. Bambi customers are four times less likely to have a claim filed against them. Which is why Bambi has received thousands of five-star reviews. You run your business. Let Bambi run your HR. Go to Bambi.com slash Roundup today for your free HR audit. Spell Bambi.com -E -E slash Roundup. Bambi.com slash Roundup. And, and and in the real world, it's like that. People, people will say to you, who is that? Whose phone's going off? I'm sorry. Everybody no. calls me. Everybody no, calls silence me. it. Put it on. Put it on vibrate. Put, Put it, it on. on me. But it's like, it's like all of this stuff, you get, you get, it's like, there's, there's epidemiologists that are unbelievable from it. And I saw it. Oxford, Yale, Stanford, they all disagree with how Fauci's handling everything. All oh, of them. Sorry, sorry, sorry. And it's like Thank these goalposts keep moving. When we had the vaccines that came out, it was great. I'm like, this is awesome. Now we can all get back at home. Well, then they're, they're, they're nothing. Now if you have a booster, a vaccine and a booster, <clears throat> and, and now if you have a vaccine and a booster, um, you're, 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 you're still not, you're still not vaccinated. Now you go back to being unvaccinated. And, and it makes literally... I got pizzazz, but it's still got nothing on that. Wow, just like that, the drop, man. I'm telling you, life is about moments. You know what I mean? It is, and I feel like just for a moment when that drop hits, just like everything's perfect, just for a moment. You know, you ever been to like a, a pack club or like a big music festival? Hundreds, maybe thousands of people all together. That was boom. Just. This is David. Yeah, David. This is Mike. You died, and you were right. I was going to call you before you got home. <laughs> what can I help uh, you hey, with? Well, I, I just got one question. Where the uh, door you opened? For the water tray? Yes. I'm having a hard time getting this open. It's, it's got a lock with a down arrow, so it should push right open. You popped it right open. I can not have a hard time doing it. Oh, the little door. You see where it looks like the little hinges are? Um, on, the, on the top? Yes. On the top of the machine? On the top of the machine. Um, well, there are two. Two slots, you know, it's got a little, uh, there are two slots where the, where the uh, lock deal is and, and a down arrow. I'm trying to think of... You know, did, 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 did you open it? Did you push it open or did you open from the bottom? Where you pour, where you pour in the water is what you're referring to, right? Yeah, yeah, where I'm referring to. Okay, uh, when you when you pull that tray out of the machine itself, what's well, the problem? I can't get to the tray. Okay, um, I'm only. How do, open, how do you open this door? So I'm confused about the door. The whole thing just pulls out of the end. I'm, maybe. I'm. You know what? I'm. I'm not. I'm not far from you. I can be there in about five minutes. If, if you want me, I'll run back over there and we can see what 
It's, I'm better at visual. <laughs> How's that sound? Okay. Yeah, no, that's fine. You're five minutes away. Yeah, I'm, I'm over here by on uh, 45th here by Ream, so I'll be there in just a few minutes. All right, thank you. Okay. You have two new text messages. Yes. And some weirdos, they use the gathering of fruit as an activity. Why don't we go apple picking? Because I'd rather die. You have to pay to pick apples. Okay, how much do I owe you to work for you for free? Don't rip me off, I'm no dummy. Yeah, we still act excited when we see fruit. We're like, yay, fruit! At least it's not vegetables! Because no one wants vegetables. When you're at a party and they have a vegetable tray, aren't you almost surprised? You're like, wow, that's a waste of money. Hell, I'd rather eat a candle. Oh, suddenly I'm the only one here that's eating a candle. Okay, everybody. No one wants a vegetable tray. Everyone knows crudite is friends for throwaway. In a Hello again. Uh, I've got it. Just pulled it out. I pulled it out. I pulled on it. I didn't pull on it. I'm sorry to oh. push down. I thought there's a latch open. So I've got it now. Yeah, they make I'm it almost it. look like it should be a latch, but it just pulls, pops straight out. Yeah, okay. No, I got it. I got it figured out. So thank you anyway. Okay. I'm glad you got it. All right, all right, bye. All right, bye-bye. Killers. I love ranch dressing. I like to dip my pizza in ranch dressing. Turn it's on. fine. You're just not allowed to vote anymore. This ranch dressing. You know how they make ranch dressing? Buttermilk and sadness. It's the only ingredients. Interesting fact, before they came up with ranch dressing, no one had eaten a raw vegetable ever. Well, we know we don't want vegetables, but we haven't wanted fruit for hundreds of years. That's why there's so many paintings in museums of just bowls of fruit. Because you can start painting a bowl of fruit, you can leave for a couple days, come back, no one would have touched the bowl of fruit. But if you're painting a donut, you better finish it on the first sitting. You can't even take a bathroom break. Hey, what happened to my donut? Your friends are like, oh, some fat guy came in here. Anyway, I'm gonna get some milk and take a nap. That's why there's no donut art. It's sad, really. When's the last time you saw a painting of a donut? Black USA, comedy for everyone. Yes, yeah, so we've got all these beefy kids running around. Well, not running. Whether you're neck deep in work, getting lost in a book, or entertaining guests. Transform your space with the Ambience On Demand Collection on the SXM app. Create the ideal atmosphere with channels featuring smooth jazz, laid-back country, acoustic classics, chill, and more. The Ambience On Demand Collection, now at the top of the SXM app. Liberty Mutual Insurance Company presents... Check it out, Lemu. A roadside carnival. Step right up, folks. Test your strength. Come see the fire-breathing baby. <laughs> Let's fan out and tell people that Liberty Mutual customizes your car insurance, so you only pay for what you need. Look! An even wearing sunglasses! Lemu, the famous. Only pay for what you need. Liberty, 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 Liberty. Finding great candidates to hire can be like, well trying to find a needle in a haystack. Sure, you can post your job to some job board, but then all you can do is hope the right person comes along, which is why you should try ZipRecruiter for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash comedy. ZipRecruiter doesn't depend on candidates finding you. It finds them for you. Its powerful technology identifies people with the right experience and actively invites them to apply to your job. You get qualified candidates fast. So while other companies might deliver a lot of hay, ZipRecruiter finds you what you're looking for. The needle in the haystack. See why four out of five employers who post a job in ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire.
And now, you can try ZipRecruiter for free. That's right, free. At ZipRecruiter.com slash comedy. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash comedy. ZipRecruiter.com slash comedy. Success is picking up extra shifts, and now you want to be the boss. Success is getting your foot in the door. Now you want to take the next step. Success looks different to everyone. And for more than 75 years, University of Maryland Global Campus has been helping working adults like you succeed again. Choose from 90-plus degree, specialization, and certificate programs with online and hybrid courses. Apply by May 31st and pay no application fee. Learn more at umgc.edu. Certified to operate by Chef.
called my other friend a night owl, and I was like, you know, owls are nocturnal. You could probably just call him an owl, and that will cover it. I find it's a lot less creepy to ask a woman to dance with you than for you. What happened with number one pencils? I feel like they really blew it. I want to see a snake eat spaghetti. I'm going to open an optical store. I'm going to make this sign really blurry. The most effective form of birth control is correcting other people's grammar. It works every time. One type of restaurant that should deliver that doesn't is a food truck. Just drive it up to my house. You're perfectly equipped for this. Come on. This is ridiculous. Wait, you're going to park somewhere? You want me to drive up and park and I got to walk over to your truck? It's ridiculous. I think it's cool that flash mobs came and went so quickly as a phenomenon. I want to see an opera about laryngitis. Taste buds sound like they get along really well with each other. I think most people who call themselves a people person should maybe check with others before they give themselves that title. My favorite thing of all time ever, of everything ever in history, would be exaggeration. Yeah, no, you know, I'm sorry. I like second guessing the best. I prefer second guessing and then exaggeration. Sometimes instead of saying, for example, I'll say something such as, such as, for example. I go to the gym religiously about twice a year around the holidays. I don't like double-decker buses. That, that's a terrible design. There's a situation where you can get into a car accident and fall down the stairs at the same time. Thank you, everybody. If you don't know what third chair clarinet does, all you do, your role, is to hold down whole notes. That's all you can handle, just whole notes. Just ba, ba, ba. I'm doing that while first chair's up there, he's ripping it like whiplash. It's like teachers blushing. The principal smoking a cigarette, he's like, ah, oh, that sweet, sweet sound, baby. I'm nine rows back, going, da, da. I don't even have a clarinet. I did it. My school ran out of clarinets, they didn't even notice. Just walking around campus, just going, da. People in your family don't know what to get grown men for gifts. That's why if you give any hint, any sniff, 
of something that you might be interested in. They get to double down on that so hard. Like, it could be Christmas time. I could literally look out the window of my kitchen and be like, oh, what a beautiful blue jay out there in the window. As soon as I leave the room, my wife will be on the phone with the whole family. We had the birds. We had the birds. Bird it up. Bird is the word. Bird. Get off those bird books. Yeah, yeah, I know. He's all into birds. He's into birds. He's bird watching. He's bird watching. He's bird watching. But then Christmas comes around, you get a bird pick. I'm looking at my wife and I'm like, oh, is this because of the blue jay, right? <laughs> One year for Christmas, my parents got me a harmonica. Oh, I'm looking at my mother, I'm like, am I going to jail? She's like, you travel a lot, I thought it would be good for traveling. I go, yeah, by plane, not freight train. <laughs> Do you really think I'm going to pull out a harmonica on my Delta flight? Like the pilot's gonna get on. Looks like we're gonna be delayed on the top man, for an NFL. We're gonna stay here instead of going back to the gate. We don't want to lose all police. But uh, Pete Corelli at Volume C is gonna play the intro to Piano Player by Billy Joe. And my mother goes, well, open up the other gift. It goes with the harmonica. I'm like, oh, my God, the harmonica is the anchor gift? And I'm thinking, what goes with the harmonica? What, you give me that Neil Young neck brace? There was a book on how to play harmonica, play harmonica. Can you imagine? Page one, blow out. Page two, suck in. That's the whole book. I dropped the harmonica, my dog got a hold of it. My dog would blow in and out. It became a toy for my dog. One time my dog's blowing on the harmonica in its little bed. I look at my wife, I'm like, do you believe my parents bought me a book on how to play something that my dog taught itself how to play? Man needs a hobby. Man needs a hobby. Even where I live now, they all, they all deal hunt. Small town living. Even like, I went to college up there and uh, I ran into a buddy of mine, an old friend who played hoops with Division Three, black guy, he stayed in town. We could have dinner with him and his wife, we're talking about it. And I'm like, how long have you been up? He's like, 10 years, bro, I love it, man. And his wife goes, he hunts every year, he's been up and out. Getting out of like, I started laughing a little bit. And the buddy goes, I don't know why you're laughing, I'm pretty good, I get one every season. I go, bro, that's because the deer doesn't know what you want. <laughs> Normally a deer sees a white guy instinctually runs away. I go and sees you, it's like, the hell is that? The first black deer hunter in North America, guy. Congratulations. You're like Jackie Robinson, you're gonna be on stamps someday. You're gonna be on postage. I'm not into golf. My dad loves golf, my brother loves golf. I tried to watch golf on TV once so I could talk to my dad about it the next day. But literally, after like two holes, there's like weeks on my eyes. I just can't stay awake. So I had to show it. I'm like, I gotta go take a nap. I'm so tired. I go in the other room. I close the shades. I lay down, try to go to sleep, and now I'm wide awake. And that's when it dawned on me. Golf, played at its highest level, is still more boring than the dark. I know I talk about my son up here, but I do want you to know that he's a very respectful young man, and he is a smart, like, too smart maybe, and he has a very dry sense of humor to the point where you don't know if it's a joke or if you're going to get murdered. Right? You wake up the next day and you're like, <laughs> that's funny, buddy! Good job, it's a funny joke, but I'm out of the line! It's like that kind of sense of humor. We were walking down the street one day, it was, it was my son and my daughter and I, and um, we were walking towards an Asian family, there were seven of them. None of them were higher than my chest. Now, does that mean I think all Asian people are short? No, of course not. I know Asian people are taller than me. I'm just telling you, these are the facts of this particular story. So the grandparents passed us, and then the parents passed us, and then the children passed us. 
And my son slowed down, and he looked at me, and he goes, Do you think Godzilla was just a normal-sized lizard? And my daughter said, Isn't that racist? And I said, We will figure that out when I'm done laughing. Sometimes you just got a letter box. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. That's why I'm the headliner. I <laughs> fixed that. It's good to be here. I'm happy to be here. I'll start, you know, just jump in. I am. Something you may not know about me, just by looking at me, is that I have T-Mobile. Uh, I know, I look like a Verizon guy. <laughs> I like having T-Mobile because I don't want to be able to talk to people all the time. I don't have to worry about their towers going down because I haven't put them up yet. <laughs> if I ever come in a major crime, no one's going to be able to track me on my device. The getaway drivers like Palisac, you gotta break your phone. They could triangulate our location. I'm like, I have T-Mobile. <laughs> My phone was born broken. It, it's crazy to me that it does not work as a phone sometimes, and that's the main reason I bought it. Like, that'd be like if you bought a new car and you're driving down the road and it breaks down, and you call the person that sold it to you, and he'd just be like, "Where are you?" And you're like, "I'm on this road." And he'd just be like. It doesn't work on that road. And you're like, but I live on that road. And he's like, well, we shouldn't have bought that car. <laughs> that car only works like a flashlight on that road. <laughs> that way you can see where you're never going to go. It used to be that all the cell phone companies were kind of bad and spotty, but then some of them got focused. Like Verizon was like, we're going to make this phone work everywhere on this map. And they did. And it was beautiful. And at the same time, T-Mobile got all their resources together. And they were like, we're going to have Charles Barkley be our spokesperson. Because that's who I associate good communication skills with. I should have known better than to stick with T-Mobile. Like, there have been signs over the years. Like, they don't even have their own stadium right now. Like, AT&T has a stadium. <laughs> T-Mobile couldn't have their own stadium because you wouldn't be able to use all the field all the time. The announcers would be like, he's at the 20, he's at the 10, he's breaking up, we lost him. This stadium sucks. I can't believe we're locked in for two years. My girlfriend has T-Mobile. That's not how we met. Uh, I wanted to leave T-Mobile and she got emotional. She's like, Michael, the whole time we've been together, we both had T-Mobile. If you leave T-Mobile, maybe that's a sign that we should break up. No. <laughs> the fact that you think that is a sign we should break up, that's, that's what that is. I don't know what to do. Uh, this is a weird thing. I'm still afraid of spiders. Adult man, don't like them. There, I said it. Guess what? Conventions of masculinity. I'm not doing it. I don't know how you get rid of that fear. I think I've decided I'm just gonna think spiders are creepy, and then one day I'm gonna die, and that's gonna be how it works out. They're creepy for a lot of reasons, okay? You can break it down. Number one, their head is in the middle. I don't like that. I don't like that in nature. They're also fast. That's the main reason why spiders are creepy, right? Because they're quick. It's not their top speed. It's the acceleration. The zero to a hundred on a spider, creepy as hell. You know why? Because the zero is very zero. It's so zero, you think the spider's dead. That's how zero it is. You're like, it's not even alive. I don't think it's alive. Look, it's just sitting there. It's not even... Oh, it's in my mouth. Oh, God. God, it comes so fast. Try to get better at life, you know? Try to eat more fruit. That's a lot harder than you'd think. Not because of motivation. I didn't know you need training. 
for certain fruits? Like, do you remember the first time you were alone as an adult with a mango? Yeah, you thought you were going to eat that mango, didn't you? Because here's what happens, you cut all the skin off, now you're holding the slipperiest thing in the world. And a knife. You just go, I'm in over my head, forget it. They should really have somebody standing next to the mangoes at the grocery store. They're like, mm, I don't think you're ready for these. I'm looking in your basket, you got bananas and mandarin oranges in there. Those are fruits for children. Show me a photo on your phone of you cutting up a pineapple correctly, then we'll talk about your future. Oh, you think because you've eaten a peach, you're just going to take that pit out of there and enjoy the fruit? <laughs> no. No one knows what a mango pit looks like. Don't try to find out. Just cut down till it feels like sand and get out with what you got. Some of you that resonated very well with. The other half are going, they come in cubes. I thought they were cubes. Aren't they just cubes? And that is when I started going to therapy. Now, I don't want to talk about therapy any more than you want to hear me talk about it. I will keep this very brief. I hate when people are too open about their therapy. And it's not that therapy is a shameful thing, it's that it's private. It's private. I don't like when people just go on and like, eh, my, on and like, eh, my shrink says, Ugh. I don't think your shrink is trying to get messages to me through you. Okay? Also, next time, listen a little closer because you're still a monster. made myself go to therapy. I was terrified to go to therapy. I'd never been before. I didn't know what to expect. And I was not raised in a culture that encouraged the acknowledgement of problems, much less the addressing of them. The culture in which I was raised was more like, you think there's something wrong with you? Oh, I think there's something wrong with you. <laughs> so I screwed up my courage, went to therapy, and very quickly realized, oh, this is a good thing. This is just about figuring things out. Why do you do the things that you do? How can you stop making the same mistakes that you always make? It was great. I did not turn out to be a secret sociopath or whatever it was I was afraid of. It's a very useful tool. So if you're having problems, I recommend giving therapy a try. There's nothing to be ashamed of. It's a very practical thing to do. And listen, it, it's good. It's not all about blaming your parents for stuff. There's enough of that, though, that you feel like you're getting your money's worth. Here's another thing. Oh, I got a list. Oh, I got a list. Here's another thing. Stop jumping up, hollering out, amen. If you ain't really been listening to what the pastor say. Oh, that's a big one right here. I think I need to repeat that one. Stop jumping up, hollering out, amen, and you ain't been really listening to what the preacher's saying. The preacher that just made an announcement. Sister Jocelyn just passed away last night. Amen! Sit your butt down. That ain't an amen moment. This could be one of the most important ones to me. If reading ain't fundamental to you, if reading really ain't your thing, especially out loud, that's a whole other reading, reading out loud. to do the announcements. Welcome, 
muscle and waste him in a day. It's Wednesday. Stop embarrassing your feet. This is the last one. I'm going to leave you alone because I see I'm starting to lose some of y'all. Because that's your mama that keeps jumping up doing them now. You know, going to church is supposed to be a happy experience. When you come through the door, you want to be greeted in a warm and friendly way. So let this be my last one. If you got bad feet, come on, get off the usher board. Just come on. Because them bad feet on that usher board, them two is not a good combination. You can't greet people at the door when your feet is hurting. You see them walking in church just, oh, Lord. You know how you pick your foot up and just set it back down? See that bend? Look at that bend. See, you don't want to bend it. Where the camera at? Put it right there. Put it on my foot. The camera. Put the Cameraman, don't play with me. Put the camera on my foot. Oh, that's why I make me have flashback in front of these church people, don't you? Don't you? I said God ain't through with me yet. Don't, don't try me. Look right there. See, you want to. When your feet is okay, you can bend it. That's how you walk. You bend it. Oh, but when your feet hurt, you just pick them up. Set them back down. You don't want that cut cross. Oh! Oh! That right the Oh, Jesus. Lord Jesus. Gracious God, our Father. Lord. Lord Jesus. Now you at the back door. Don't tell me to come here and praise the Lord. You praise the Lord. What you want? I was hoping we could get a seat for three. Finish that joke, that's funny to me. Oh Lord. Oh. I'm gonna give you y'all money worth tonight. I ain't lying to you. You watch. What's up, y'all? It's Tia Amanda Seals, and I'm back at Sirius XM with Smart Bunny and Black Radio. And this time I'm bringing some friends. And it's damn funny too. That's right, we're hitting the airways every Monday on Kevin Hart's Laugh Out Loud Radio with your weekly dose of black culture, black games, and a whole lot of the commentary. And you never know who's gonna stop by. Trust me when I say you don't wanna miss it. Here's two episodes of Smart Funny and Black Radio every Monday morning on Sirius XM Channel 96. Available anytime on the SXM app, available with our most popular plans. Don't tell me there's not enough funny women. There's enough for this whole channel. Let's talk about it. She's so funny. On Sirius XM. Get rid of everything in your home that doesn't bring you joy. So I threw the book away. Series XM Channel.
Sunday at noon and 9 p.m. Eastern, along with highlights every hour throughout the weekend with the SXM app on Fish Radio. This is Channel 29. Welcome to Delicious Planet, presented by Hint. Water with a touch of true fruit flavor. We're in Madagascar. This troop of lemurs have discovered a culinary jackpot, a fruited mango tree. One hardly needs to speak their language to appreciate their delight. Oh, Lenny, this one is perfect. Not as perfect as this one. That is not a mango, Lenny. No, but this mango hint water tastes just like mango. And with no calories or sweetness. Hint water? Get out of here. They got pineapple water that tastes just like pineapple, too. Now get water. It's just like fruit. How can our feet look just like our hands? Whoa, 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 what? Look, feet, hands, feet, hands, feet, hands. Whoa, you are freaking me out here, Lenny. Find Hint Water at stores nationwide or have it shipped right to your door. New customers can get 40% off and free shipping at hintwater.com. Feet, hands. Success is picking up extra shifts, and now you want to be the boss. You want to be the boss. Success is getting your foot in the door. Now you want to take the next step. Success looks different to everyone. And for more than 75 years, University of Maryland Global Campus has been helping working adults like you succeed again. Choose from 90-plus degree, specialization, and certificate programs with online and hybrid courses. Apply by May 31st and pay no application fee. Learn more at umgc.edu. Certified to operate by Chef. Hot dogs and angels tour. Hey, I'm Michael Tim, by the way, you talk here, Yankee. Sir, I'm from Missouri. And let me tell you this little piece of history. I don't even know if we were in the war. I think we were half and half and just beat the crap out of one another. We never even left our own property, sir. It's Kathleen Madigan and the Hot Dogs and Angels Tour. For a complete list of dates and tickets, check out KathleenMadigan.com. Presented by Sirius XM. Laugh USA. I'm trying to be cool. <laughs> Comedy for everyone. Serious X78. My wife Lindsay and I do like to go out and uh, eat. We, we tend to like the same foods, which is nice. Helps with the relationship. Uh, my ex-wife and I did not. We're not on the same page when it came to food. I'm definitely a carnivore. Uh, my ex-wife is a uh, vegetarian and a real vegetarian. And I say real because I'm amazed how many people do not seem to understand what being a vegetarian is. It's a very simple club. <laughs> I still hear people say stuff like, oh yeah, I'm a vegetarian. I, I mean, I'd like a little bit of chicken. But then you're not a vegetarian. You're just known as a liar. New text message from Connor. HTTPS colon slash slash photos dot at dot goo dot gl slash c k y x r e i s r q p three s q l p seven couldn't do it i couldn't live with that you know those memories i just i, I couldn't eat oh my god i mean could you do that seriously could you do that uh seriously have we met i love meat i love to live one plus one equals i call ribs Since watch that movie when I fly, I throw a little A1 in my suitcase. <laughs> this was a crash, now it's more of a barbecue. <laughs> Vince and I, uh, we get along really well. We argue, but what, you know, whatever. Every couple argues. Our main argument's over uh, communication stuff. I feel like that's every couple has some kind of communication issue. I know what ours is, it's the same argument all the time. My wife, Lindsay, thinks that I don't listen to her enough, and I don't care about that. <laughs> and it upsets her that I don't care. But she's right. I could listen more. I could definitely work on more effective listening. And I will when she starts working on telling better, shorter stories. Yeah. What about that part of the equation? Why is it always the listener's fault? That's not logical. People love to be entertained by a good story. They love to be captivated by a good tale. If someone consistently doesn't love your stories, well, maybe you're no Stephen King, my friend. Maybe less details, more action. Wrap it up from time to time. She's always like, are you even listening right now? 
Now how could I be? I'm a human being, my attention span has limits. I've been talking for 25 minutes about some lady I have never met. Having problems I do not care about. If this was a channel, I would have changed it 25 minutes ago. This is the worst melodrama I've ever seen in my life. We're very different, you know? She's, uh, she's much more verbal than I am. She's like, she likes small talk. I'm not much of a small talk person. But luckily she has other outlets. You know, like she talks to her friend Natasha literally every day on the phone. No part of me understands that. It took a long time. One time they talked for three hours in the morning after already having talked on the phone the night before. So I assume logically that something had gone horribly wrong in Natasha's life. I was like, what's going on with Natasha? Is she okay? And she's like, yeah, she's fine. I'm like, why are you talking so long? She's like, what do you care? I'm like, you haven't been awake long enough to mathematically have enough new subject matter to discuss. What, are you just hitting highlights of previous conversations? A little montage reel together, montage reel together, you know? It's so different. I, I didn't talk to my best friend from college for over two years. We finally caught up on the phone. 15 minutes, we're done. I feel like we're as good of friends as ever. The conversation was so short. He's gonna be our only kid. I don't know how people do it with more than one child. I really don't. I mean, anytime we have to get out the door on any sort of predetermined schedule, it is a logistical nightmare. I don't know how people do it. You have to have a system, you know. I saw you, picture. Did you watch the video? No, I, I'm driving right now, and I'm literally fixing to pull into somebody's house. Oh, where are you at? Uh, middle of nowhere, Oklahoma. I could've, oh. I could have just said Oklahoma. That's middle of nowhere. I was going to say. Yeah. How long are you going to do that for? Huh? How long are you going to be there for? Uh, well, I got this stop, and I got another one in Arkansas, then back home. Why? So I'll be a few hours. I think that's not going to be too long. You could uh, come to the mall and watch some people away. I know. I saw they had that set up when I went by the mall this morning. I was like, dang it. Yeah. Anyway, it was a video of Sam racing. Good. I'm going to have to watch it in the Geo. Yeah. All right, I'm going to have to watch it here in a second. His little track race. And I was going to go with him the next round, but... It's so sunny out here. He didn't put any sunscreen on, so I'm having to go get him some sunscreen. He's about to be burnt to a crisp. <laughs> and he's like, did you get sunscreen? I was like, I put it on me and Emma before we left. He's like, dang it. I was hoping you brought it with you. And I was like, no, the adults made the adult decision to put sunscreen on her and the child. Yeah, tell him he needs man up. All right, well, I'm pulling yeah. in this, this driveway here. All right. Enjoy your Bye. races. I will. Bye. Bye. That is a lot of lace. Very impressive. Also, kind of a showy, boastful motto. Doris, you can buy it. Boy, she was talking politics. She's anti-Biden, which everyone should be. But I should have known when I saw that Trump flag flying out there. Uh, I didn't even bring it up. and support. Go to Shopify.com slash XM right now. Shopify.com slash XM. What's Philo? It's the easiest, most affordable way to stream more than 60 channels of live TV with thousands of hours of movies and shows on demand from networks like VH1, MTV, BET, TLC, Discovery, Lifetime, and AMC, Hallmark, and Nickelodeon. Watch all the hit shows in one spot like Yellowstone, Love and Hip Hop Atlanta, 90 Day Fiance, Tyler Perry's Sisters, and SpongeBob SquarePants, just to name a few. Plus, you'll also get an unlimited DVR that lets you save as much as you want for a whole year. Binging anytime and anywhere has never been simpler. And the best part is that you get all this for just $25 a month. No contracts, no commitments, no hassles. Just a better way to watch TV. With Philo, everyone can watch. 
Go to philo.tv, that's P-H-I-L-O.tv, and use promo code WATCH to get 50% off your first month. Hey, it's me, Tom Popper, comedian and host of What a Joke with Papa and Fortune on Netflix as a Joke Radio, Sirius XM 93. Going out on the road, live, stand-up comedy, to some of my favorite clubs around the country who are doing it the right way. I need to do it. You need to do it. We need to enjoy our lives. I'll see you there. Bring your mask. Go to TomPapa.com. Get out of your house. Laugh USA. This is going to hurt me. I'm going to hurt you. Comedy for everyone. Sirius XM 98. Just had a birthday. I turned 2017 now. Headed for 2018. And oh gosh, you know, dating really changes in your 2010s. Because you're tired. You've had it. You can't start each new relationship all over again from the beginning like when you were young. You know, you're out of steam. It's not like, ooh, someone's coming over. It's more like, oh man, I can't lose weight all over again for a new guy. That makes you kind of vulnerable, so I can understand the rationale to go pain management on this thing and let me play through it tonight, but that does worry you that you could make this potentially pretty bad. Well, Doc Rivers said, and again, I'm not saying Doc Rivers is, is, is an actual doctor. Just because his name's Doc doesn't mean he has a PhD. But he did say that he is being told the injury cannot get worse. So that's a good sign, I guess. But apparently he's in significant pain. The good thing, though, is going to be this. Courtney, they're going to eat. If they win today, and I think I would play him just to finish it because you might end up with a full week off at that point. Scotty Barnes is likely to play today, but I still think the 76ers have been so much better. And the difference is not, as you said, I mean, it's not James Harden. He's not played particularly great, but it's Tyrese Maxson. And all year long, I sort of thought, do they have a third guy? Do they have a big three? It looks like Tyrese Maxson can be that guy. And for a dude in his second year, he is not scared at all, Courtney. I mean, he just sits around with that big smile. It just takes guys off the dribble left and right. I've become, I mean, I watched him in college and loved him, but he has absolutely just taken his game to another level. And think about all that he's gone through this year, starting with the chance that he gets thrust into the lineup in that starting guard role. And then when James Harden is traded to the Philadelphia 76ers, he has to adjust his game to play with one of the most dominant on-ball players in the NBA. And he's done that. Like, and he's really, really done a good job with that. And at this time last week, Matt, as the playoffs were getting started, we weren't really talking about Joel Embiid and James Harden, the duo. We were talking about Tyrese Maxey and Tobias Harris, the duo, and who would be the more important player in the series. And I know there's some analysts on this network who think it's preposterous to think that Tyrese Maxey, Maxey could actually be that person for the 76ers in the series over James Harden. Yeah, who are those people, though, Courtney? Who are yeah, they? I mean, Tobias, Tobias Harris has not even had one game as good as Tyrese Maxey's game one has in three years, right? Yeah, and I mean, I feel like you don't want to get into like a desperation mode, right? Because that's what they've been trying to avoid, and having Joel and B play through this would allow them to kind of stave that off for as long as they can. But it's almost like you can see those playoff demons poking their head out with James Harden, just waiting for him, just waiting for that moment for him to collapse, because unless he's getting to the rim, he's not having a great playoff series shooting from the floor from the rest of the field. So, with that said, I do think Tyrese Maxey is a more important player to this series than James Harden is, just because of the way that it's proven to play out so far. So, they better be in position to have him play the way that he did games one through three and have that continue over tonight, because his second year leap that he has made, I don't feel like we can look around the league right now and point on anybody else who has had as much growth and has meant as much to their team in his second year as Tyrese Maxey has. That, that, that's a really great point. You usually, I mean, I think I think he was picked 21st, maybe, in the draft, something like that. I mean, you don't see guys that go there doing this in their second year, especially guys that are one and done. Like, sometimes you might see, like, a Jalen Brunson, like a senior who goes and they just didn't, they get they, they get, didn't give him enough credit as he came out because he stayed in school for four years. But you rarely see a pick, a down through there, make that kind of leap in their second year. The 76ers have to think 
think that, that now that future is there, which brings me to Harden. I mean, we knew that Harden might have to be the second fiddle in Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. Now, he's not the third fiddle, but there are times that on offense, Maxi looks like he's becoming a second option. He can Harden be a third fiddle on an effective team. Yeah, and I know that there are a lot of people who don't want to hear that because they expect that James Harden, given his pedigree and, you know, perennial all-star player, that he's going to rise to the level that we haven't seen. Like, it's this nonsense that just because he's James Harden and has a name attached to himself, that he's all of a sudden going to become something that he has not been historically throughout his career. And that's the frustrating part. Give Tyrese Maxey the props that he's due and stop just saying, stop just believing that you're going to see something from James Harden that hasn't come to fruition at any point of his career. He's played fine this series, but he's not shooting the ball well. He can go to the rim, and that's great. But when he fouls out like the way that he did the other night in Game 3, you're in a lot of trouble if Joel Embiid's not playing. You're in a lot of trouble if Tyrese Maxey isn't playing at the level that he's been playing at. So, I mean, yeah, I do think he's a liability, and I do think in this series he's settling in as a third fiddle. And that's okay for now, but is that going to hold up when you very likely play the Miami Heat next round? I'm not so sure. Yeah, I don't know if he's going to want to do that. But let's let's move, let's look for. Let's say they end up playing. Right Is it? Would you, as of today, with what you've seen so far from the 76ers and specifically from it being at Maxi, would you make them the favorite in that series against Miami? Probably not. I, they were. And I'll be. I'll be completely honest with you. I was very cautious with the way that I was trying to handicap this series going in. I thought that the Raptors posed a huge threat to the 76ers in the first round. They did a complete letdown. Like, I remember when we were like looking at the 4-5 matchup, thinking, man, is there any way that the 76ers can get out of playing the Toronto Raptors? Because we have Matisse Thibault, who was like, only partially vaccinated and wasn't able to play, you know, in Game 3 at Scotiabank Arena, and won't be able to play again tonight. You think, okay, what's that going to do for their defense? And truly, they've been okay without him. So, like, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I will try to, like, lift a little bit of the covenant here and just kind of let it rip. But I still would go with Miami Heat because they've been so quietly, quietly so good throughout their first round series against the Atlanta Hawks. And I think that that will continue. I'm all in on the 76ers. I think people have been down on them because they tend, it's cool to be down on James Harden. It's cool to say he's not as good as he was, and he's not. But I think that, they, that there's been a tendency because of people's feelings about Harden to put it on the team. I mean, what, there were three games between the one seed and the four seed in the standings in the East, so it's not like that he'd have an amazing, you know, a significantly better season. I don't see any reason with what it means to him to think that they won't be able to do it in the next round. And as good as the Heat are, if Tyrese Maxey does what he does in the first three games, I think Philadelphia is the better team. So it's big. It, I agree with you. I thought this series would be close. But now that I see the way Philadelphia's playing, I think we all just kind of have to move our sort of prejudice against Harden and sort of our feelings about him in the clubhouse and say, hey, maybe this team's a lot more than Harden. It and is. have success. I mean, if Tyrese Maxey can keep doing what he's doing, then that's not a bad. I think changes the way that you look at the next series. But it's in spite of James Harden, not, you know, along with him. Yeah. Well, Luca and John Moran were two of the best stories in the regular season. But Luca hasn't even played in the playoffs. And John Moran hasn't necessarily been thrilling.
cutting the price of your wireless bill feels good. Really good. Actually, it feels great. You should try it out. So cut your bill by switching to Straight Talk Wireless. Now offering our $45 Silver Unlimited plan with 5 gigabytes of hotspot and nationwide 5G on America's largest, most dependable networks. The $45 Silver Unlimited plan from Straight Talk. Straight Talk Wireless. No contract, no compromise. The loan equals 30 days. See terms and conditions at straighttalk.com. 5G capable device required. Actual availability coverage and speed may vary. This is an important message from the CDC about coronavirus. If you are young or otherwise healthy, you are at risk, and your activities can increase the risk for others. Do not visit nursing homes, retirement, or long-term care facilities unless for critical assistance. Practice good hygiene. Wash your hands. Avoid touching your face. Sneeze or cough into a tissue or the inside of your elbow. Disinfect frequently used items and surfaces as much as possible. Visit coronavirus.gov for the latest information from the CDC. That's coronavirus.gov. When your manhood bends in a different direction, visit PDURO.com to find a urologist. Because a bend in your erection might be Peyronie's disease or PD. It's a condition that involves a buildup of scar tissue, also called plaque, but it's treatable. Zyaflex, collagenase Clostridium histolytica, is the only non surgical FDA approved injection for Peyronie's disease. Zyaflex is a prescription for adult men who have a plaque that can be felt and occur in their penis greater than 30 degrees at the start of treatment, along with daily penile stretching and straightening exercises, Zyflex has been proven to help gradually reduce the bend. Results will vary. Don't receive if the treatment area involves your urethra, the tooth that urine passes through, you're allergic to any collagenase or the ingredients in Zyflex. may cause serious side effects, including penile fracture or other serious injury during an erection, severe allergic reactions, including anaphylaxis, and localized skin and soft tissue death called necrosis due to hematoma, which could require surgery. You may feel sudden back pain conditions after treatment. Seek help right away if you have any signs of injury. Do not have sex or any sexual activity during and for at least four weeks after each treatment cycle, which includes two injections, one to three days apart. Tell your doctor about all your medical conditions. If you have a bleeding condition or take blood thinners, as risk of bleeding or bruising at the treatment site is increased, ask your doctor about all possible side effects and for product information. Talk to a urologist about side effects. Find a Zyflex trained urologist at PDURO.com or call 877-942-3539. The experts stylists at Sport Clips Haircuts understand that only a hair's breadth separates the pros from the Joes. That's where their training comes into play. Massaging shampoo, we're not just rubbing heads, people. Hit all seven pressure points on that cranium. Remember, there's science to relaxation. The Sport Clips stylist, we only take the best and then make them more best. Sport Clips, the pros in men's hair. Vikings. Comes in the Netflix original series. But you don't. Even me, I do not want to kill you. Make sure you get some decent bear. Billy the Kid premieres Sunday. Only on FX. Get the channel or the app. Did you miss your favorite NFL team's game? Catch our Sirius XM exclusive NFL game replays on the SXM app. Free for most subscribers. by Progressive Insurance for NBA games today in the playoffs. We've talked pretty extensively about two of them, but there are a couple more worth noting. So it's time for Straight Talk, brought to you by Straight Talk Wireless. And Courtney, I want to start with the Grizzlies and the Timberwolves. I am a, I'm a big fan of both Carl Towns and John Morant. They both went to college right here in the state that I live in in Kentucky, and they both have had sort of odd series, but Carl Towns has gotten a much worse, much worse sort of. That's odd. Oh. Hey. Where's Hannah? Uh, last I knew she was at home. Papa, look. 
I see it. What's wrong? What is wrong with you? I did it. I told you. I thought I mentioned it today, though. Why? Look at it, though. It looks good. Well, yeah, because you're adorable. I know, and look how... And it's my nose looks better. Better? Your nose looks fine. You're just pretty. Now it's holding it together. I like it. Uh, I blame I your mother. Well, text her a picture of it. Yeah, I was, I was just going to text her and tell her funny. Yeah. I like it though. I like and you. Bye. All I had to do was wipe a little bit right here because it was a little bit. I just tried like that much. Just a little <laughs> bit. Bit. Uh, not even a, a You're funny. Okay, I just wanted to show you the car stall again. Okay. Bye. Okay, I love you, bye. Love you too. The approach to this whole thing following the game when you're hearing him talk about it post game, you know, he had eight points and five fouls. That's awful. Yeah. And he, du he ducked accountability. And this is a player who I'm with you, Matt. Like, I really like Carl Anthony Towns. And during the regular season, like, you cannot argue that he is not a top 15 player in the NBA. 24.6 points, 9.8 boards, 3.6 assists per game, 41% shooting from three point range. He won the three point contest this year during All Star weekend. It looked like he had found another part of his game to elevate himself. But as we know, playoffs are where you build your reputation. And just like a James Harden that we were talking about previously here on game day, that's the thing that Carl Anthony Towns is missing. And yes, he hasn't had those same sort of opportunities because the Timberwolves have not been a successful team that's made it through a regular season to begin with the last three or four seasons. But he struggled against the Grizzlies. And while I, you know, I mean, you can silence your critics with a game four win. And, and if he comes back and it looks like he did earlier in the series, that game last Saturday when he and Ann were just like unstoppable, that can do it. But I don't know if this team has it in them. I mean, that was so devastating the other night. I don't know how you come back from that. I don't know that you can. I mean, you know, there are, there are losses that as you watch them happen, you feel it happening and you're like, someone has to stop this train wreck and you just can't. And they couldn't. And what's funny about that game, I turned it on, Courtney, and I actually turned it off twice thinking it was over. You know, when they were up 20 in the second quarter, I thought, well, I can go to dinner. And then I came back and there was 24 or 25, and I thought, well, that's the See, it was a good decision. I didn't even know they had blown it once, much less that they would blow it twice. It really is unbelievable. But on the other side, I continue to be more impressed with the Grizzlies. I mean, they're only the third team in the last 25 years to go on a 15 or home run or better twice in a single playoff game. Only the third team to do that. And they're doing it with a variety of different guys. They're all young. They're all hungry. They've changed the way they played a little bit. They put a couple players like Stephen Adams on the bench and said, we're just going to go in a different direction in this series. And it's working, and I still think Morant has another level to get. He still is not playing as he did some of the regular season. I've come out of the last couple of games even more impressed with Memphis than I was coming into the season without the players. Yeah, and I think that was the knock that they had on them throughout you know, the regular season when they got the two seed. Are they going to be able to sustain a long playoff run because they are still so young? And even when John Morant hasn't been playing at his absolute best, and I, and I, and I agree, I think, that there's this, I think that there's this extra gear that has yet to be unlocked, and I'm really, really eager to see what that looks like tonight. You know, Jaron Jackson has been great. The rest of the backcourt has been great. And they've been, they've put themselves in a pretty good position where they don't need John to be on another planet playing in order to win these games. And, you know, what, what the Timberwolves did when they were actually a good team the other night, the first time that they built that 25, 26 point lead, whatever it was, they used the pick and roll on their defense to make John Morant uncomfortable. And they didn't let him come downhill. They didn't, like, have him in the ability to come off screens. Then all of a sudden, they either forgot how to do that or he figured out how to do it in spite of their defense. So I feel like there's a lot of things that the Minnesota Timberwolves are going to have to do tonight in order to work around that because the job that you're starting to see heat up, I think is going to come to, you know, kind of come to fruition.
situation here in game four, considering where he was the other night, and just like seeing, like, all right, he's starting to get rolling. How much better can they look? Well, let's switch gears for a second to the Mavs and the Jazz. We just have a couple minutes here, but Mavs are up 2-1. I think if they win this series, we're going to see the Jazz, this team, this version of it, uh, take it away completely. I think they're going to end up breaking it up. But what's surprising about this Mavs series is, of course, you don't have Luka. And I'm not willing to say what uh, you're starting to hear a little hints of. Well, maybe the Mavs are just as good without him. I think that's ridiculous. But they have found something with this Jalen Brunson thing in terms of now being able to, if nothing else, you don't feel like you have to play Luka 44 minutes a game. Because you can do this where Brunson runs the show, and it's clear it can work, and certainly in this series. So whenever Luka comes back, this is a different look now. And I think it's a Mavs team that, at least in the last couple of games, has looked much more dangerous overall, maybe, than they would have even going into the playoffs. Yeah, and I don't want to be prisoner of the moment here, but I, I like what we are seeing, seeing from Jalen Brunson. I mean, he's Dallas's primary ball handler without Doncic on the floor. Uh, he's been an absolute star this series. I mean, for, for the Mavs to go up 2-1, they didn't do it without the help of uh, Jalen Brunson. I mean, he was the key factor for them in, you know, being able to torch the, the Utah Jazz. And the good thing is that we know with Luka, he's questionable for tonight for game four because of that straight left calf. It does sound kind of from the reporting that we're hearing that he probably will be ready to go because he was doing five on five on Thursday and Friday. They, the reports are that he's not experiencing any pain or any discomfort. I feel like if they see the window right here to be able to finally get out of the first round and have Luke out there, whether it's a full game or whether he's on a minutes restriction, they're going to do it because Jalen Brunson needs support around him. And I think he's played great so far, but how much better can they look when they get Luke out there? I wonder if it counts for Luca. It counts as getting out of the first round if he didn't play in the series. I think that would be. Uh, I think that's a fair question. That straight top, a straight top wireless, no contract, no compromise. I will note, by the way, about Jalen Brunson. We shouldn't be shocked. The guy won two national championships in college basketball and made big shots down the stretch of both of them. That's a guy who's shown over the years he can play in games that matter. Well, a guy who's played in many games that matter and has succeeded is Kevin Durant. But he hasn't been great this series. Are we going to see an all-timer from Durant tonight? That's next year on Game Day on ESPN Radio. straight to your email so you have them when you need it most. It's the most complete free warning light report backed by technician verified fixes. The free fix binder service. Only at AutoZone. AutoZone. More details at AutoZone.com. Friends, ever heard the grass is always greener on the other side? If you're in a dead-end job, you want greener grass. Well, my computer career can help. In months, not years, they can give you a new life as an IT pro. You learn from home by taking classes live online. Financial aid is available to those who qualify. And my computer career offers lifetime career services, which helps you find jobs with companies begging for IT pros. Go to mycomputercareer.edu today and take the free career evaluation. It's not rocket science. It's mycomputercareer.edu. In sports, a strong game plan is key. The same is true if you're buying or, refi buying or refinancing a home. That's why it's important to talk to an independent mortgage broker first. They work with you to find a home loan that's faster, easier, and cheaper than your bank or an online lender. And they'll help you through the entire process. So, if you're ready to get in the game, go to findamortgagebroker.com today. Powered by United Wholesale Mortgage, LLC, Equal Housing Lender, NMLS number 3038, licensed in all 50 states and District of Columbia. Tune in to the morning drive and start the day off on the fast track with veteran race announcer Mike Bagley and race insider Pete Snowy. 
some of the latest news, interview guests, and take calls from listeners to give fans an in-depth look into NASCAR from the garage and around the track. It's the Morning Drive, weekdays on Sirius XM NASCAR Radio Channel 90, brought to you by GEICO. Switch to GEICO today and see all the ways you can save. It's easy. Simply go to GEICO.com to get a rate quote and get started seeing how much you could save. And now it's GEICO's Motorcycle Rules of the Road. Avoid biking in the rain and never touch another person's bike. Hey guys, look at these bikes. So shiny. Whoops. I'm gonna leave a note. Oh gosh, there's more. And the rule to saving on motorcycle insurance is, in 15 minutes, Geico could save you 15% or more. When you own a small business, sometimes you need funds fast. So go to OnDeck, America's largest online small business lender with over $14 billion funded. OnDeck makes it easy to apply in minutes and, if approved, get your loan as soon as the same day so you can get back to business. Go to OnDeck.com. Your loan is on deck. Depending on certain loan attributes, your business loan may be issued by OnDeck or Celtic Bank. The Utah Chartered Industrial Bank member FDIC. Limited eligibility for same-day funding. OnDeck does not lend in every state. All loans subject to lender approval. Here's the deal. I've had constipation with belly pain, discomfort, and bloating for years. I've tried a lot of laxatives and fiber supplements, but my symptoms keep coming back. You could have a chronic condition called irritable bowel syndrome with constipation or IBSC. Linzess or linaclotine is a prescription medicine that treats IBSC in adults. Linzess works differently than laxatives. It lets you have more frequent and complete bowel movements and helps relieve overall abdominal symptoms, belly pain, discomfort, and bloating. These symptoms are studied in combination, not individually. Do not give Linzess to children less than two years old. It may harm them. Do not take Linzess if you have a bowel blockage. Get immediate help if you develop unusual or severe stomach pain, especially with bloody or black stools. The most common side effect is diarrhea, sometimes severe. If it's severe, stop taking Linzess and call your doctor right away. Other side effects include gas, stomach area pain, and swelling. There could be more to your story with IBSC. Talk to a doctor today. Say yes to Linzess. Learn more at Linzess.com or call 1-800-L-I-N-Z-E-S-S. Sponsored by Happy and Ironwood Pharmaceuticals. Christopher Mad Dog Russo's podcast, Digging Up the Past, digs deep on sports history. Binge the first two seasons now on the SXM app.
good, good music selection there. Bring in Christian Winfield on the New York Daily News. He is a Nets reporter. And I got to start with this, Christian. I've watched this series, and it's been weird to me to see a Kevin Durant that I am not used to. A Kevin Durant that seems sort of flummoxed by ball pressure, turnovers, 0 for 10 in the second half in one game, and oddly seeming sort of discombobulated a little bit, something I've never seen from one of the coolest customers in the league. Am I just seeing, like, reading into stuff, or has this been an odd two-game performance by one of the best offensive players of all time? Yeah, I think odd would be an understatement. You know, this is a guy who's version 29.9 points per game during the regular season. That number would lead the league if Kevin Durant was eligible to do so had he played enough games. You know, just to put it into context, even though Doka said at the beginning of game two that there was a stat from last season where Kevin Durant was averaging just under 42 points per game coming off of any games in the playoffs that the Nets lost. So for him to come out and really put up a game where he did most of his damage at the free throw line and couldn't get anything going from the actual field, you know, it's going to be a lot of tips you have to, you know, you know, go to James Brown, Jason Tatum, to anyone who's guarding Kevin Durant. And it's not just any one person, it's an entire subject team. Whenever, it's times when Katie doesn't even have a ball and there's still two defenders on him, right? Anytime he's trying to make an action to work, the ball is trying to get the ball. You got guys like Al Orford putting the body up, you got the end of him, and it's legal, right? But those, those, they take the toll on him. And then after he goes through all that contact, now you're expecting him to put the ball on the floor and make a play, after they run another two defenders out of it. The Celtics, that, that great team, even though obviously he was an assistant under Nash on, on the next staff last year, he really has some insight on how you shut KD down, you get physical with him, you run multiple defenders at him, and they're also playing in his own. I, I agree with you, and this is not the Kevin Durant that I think anybody has seen or expected to see in the series. You bring up an interesting point there on the coaching matchup, and I want to get into that in a little bit. But, sure. you know, with Ky with Kevin Durant, he's 4-17 the other night, 0 for 10 in the second half. And after the game, he made this point that he has to be more patient but also play fast sometimes, too. And I feel like you can get up kind of caught up in the catch-22 of what that presents, Christian, where if you're being patient, that might lead to being passive. And if you're playing fast, you're probably, you know, maybe even a little frazzled on the floor, you know, not able to handle the multiple looks that the ball that Boston's throwing you. Like, how does he turn this thing around on Saturday night? And what is the key for him with that factor? Game one, nine, uh, nine 
shoots that stretch. So when they get to try to be cool and cool and calm, we don't know. Obviously, Robert was coming off of a knee, you know, and, and I think Colton said he might play something like 20 to 30 minutes in that ballpark. That's a big improvement, right? Because you had Al Horford and you had Daniel Tice, and sure, they've been tough, but Robert Williams gives you that vertical direction you can build a lot of. And he's just a devastating shot blocker. He's a guy who will meet you at the rim and then block your shot into the third row of courtside feet, you know, so that's going to be a difficult adjustment for a team that has already proven that they've had difficulty adjusting to the Celtics adjustments. You're telling me you're going to have to put Robert Williams into the mix. And Robert Williams is another player who's getting a defensive player of the year candidate. Yeah, you know, uh, he might be able to come back now and really just change the series even more. So uh, it's going to be tough. I don't know what the Nets are going to do. Maybe you counteract that by playing Marcus Aldridge. The Marcus is a guy who can space the floor out, so maybe you pull Robert Williams out of the paint by having the Marcus post up at the high post or maybe up in that corner. But it's going to be tough. I don't think Steve Nash wants to make too many changes to his rotation right now. And if he doesn't, you know, you're going to see more of what we've seen so far. Talking to Christian Winfield, New York Daily News reporter for the Nets. I'll finish with this. Kyrie Irving was so amazing in game one, even in defeat. Game two. Sure. Good, but a little odd. A lot of the shots that he made in game one just didn't go down in game two. You feel like you'll see more of game one, Kyrie, or game two, Kyrie, in these next couple? I wish I could tell you. I don't, I don't know what Kyrie was going to do. You know, you think that having a long court would, would give him some type of juice, but on my flight home from Boston, I saw Celtics fans coming with me. They're on the way in. The retail yeah, they are. The tickets for game three. The cheapest ticket you can get right now for game three is something like three hundred and thirty dollars. As you can tell, the trends flooded and brought those tickets. They're on the way here, so you're not going to get all that money. The home court advantage of the home court that bought the player is not very significant. We saw it happen in Steph Curry came. We saw it happen in Miami. He came and he did not just came. We're going to see if it's going to be the Celtics fans trying to win. So, I mean, we could be getting a better performance from Curry or possibly, but it won't be due to being at home.
bucks a month. A life insurance policy from Big Blue will guarantee you a spot in your family's Hall of Fame. To find out just how affordable life insurance can be for you, get on the phone and call Big Blue at 800 333 1750. 800 333 1750. Before life throws that nasty curveball at you, call in the world's best pinch hitter, Big Blue. Call 800-333-1750, or BigLoo.com. Hey, Mike, what are you doing way up on that ladder? You're going to hurt yourself. Uh, try to collect these gutters. That's smart. I had water damage from my gutters last year. It cost me ten grand. You're away $10,000. Yeah, it's over here. It looks like water's been pouring over your clogged gutters, and it's probably doing real damage to your foundation. You need to do what I did. Get off the ladder and call Leaf Filter. Hey, yeah, but I need to get these gutters flowing now. That's why you need to call Leaf Filter. They'll clean and realign your gutters and install their exclusive micro-mesh screen system so nothing gets in your gutters except water. So Leaf Filter protects my house from damage and needs more gutters than you a big new plus Leaf Filter has an industry-leading lifetime warranty so your gutters are covered for life. Thanks, Frank. I'm calling Leaf Filter today. Don't go another day with your home unprotected. Call 1-844-300-LEAF or go to tryleaffilter.com for your free gutter inspection. Call 1-844-300-LEAF or go to tryleaffilter.com right now for an extra 15% savings, call 1 300 leaf or go to tryleaffilter.com. That's 1 300 leaf. Do you suffer from lower back pain, knee pain, foot pain, or fall arches? Do you? If yes, just stop and write this magic word G Defy. G D E F Y. What is G Defy? G Defy is the footwear designed by Gravity Defier Medical Technology with a worldwide patented Versal Shot Sole. Their shoes are clinically shown to relieve pain by a double-blind clinical study conducted by Olivia UCLA Medical Center. You can try it there for 30 days with free corrective fit orthotic inserts. If you're not satisfied, just return the shoes for a full refund and keep the free orthotics as a gift. Don't end to suffering. Save $20 and get free shipping from the Fire when you go to gdefy.com slash radio and use code
offensive linemen, but you don't have a lot of major personalities. And then you get to the quarterbacks, and you're not even sure where quarterbacks are going to go. Maybe one goes at six. The next obvious choice is probably 20. Uh, Pittsburgh, it is, a, it is a draft that I think is much more open with the various possibilities of what could happen than we often see at the very top. Yeah, and I think that the intrigue is not necessarily as strong this year because of the names that are not there. I mean, you don't have five prospects that could potentially go in the top 15 picks at the quarterback position. It's just not what it is this year. That's what it was last year. And, you know, the fact of the matter is you have a team like Detroit who could really shake things up here. And, yes, like Mel had mentioned there at the end of um, his segment with Dari about the quarterback market and, you know, where do we see quarterbacks go? Like, does Malik Willis go to the Steelers at 20? Do the Carolina Panthers take Kenny Pickett at 6? Well, what if Detroit flips the draft order on its head and takes a quarterback at 2? Like, that could potentially, like, change things a lot where you would see Aiden Hutchinson potentially go number one. But what does that mean for Trevon Walker? What does that mean for Kayvon Thibodeau? For these defensive ends that we expect to be top five, top six picks, that might change the order. So, I mean, it's kind of, I hate to say this word, it's kind of boring right now. The NFL draft and the lead See, I didn't want it, but to say I that. promise, I promise it could get very intriguing on Thursday if something happens. Because last year we got spoiled, remember? At the end of March when the San Francisco 49ers and the Miami Dolphins flipped the draft order with the picks and you know allowed San Francisco to get Trey Lance. We didn't see any of that this year, where the draft order changed that drastically outside of the New Orleans Saints moving around a little bit. But I, I yeah. you know, I think Thursday. I, I didn't want to say it was boring. I don't want to say it's boring, but I think it's both. I mean, I, I look at these guys and I go, how many defensive ends that I don't really know can be in it? And the quarterbacks, the problem with the quarterbacks is not even that they're not, like, top elite talent. It's that I don't think most people have seen yeah, these guys play. I mean, how many people watch Kenny Pickett and Malik Wilkins play? Okay, you knew Desmond Ritter, maybe you watched the one playoff game, but they got destroyed in that playoff game. Matt Corral and Ole Miss is by the one guy that maybe some people have seen. And I think that makes it part of it as well. You've got, even at the marquee position, you've got unknown guys. I mean, the amount of people listening to this show that watch Malik Willis play a game at Liberty, that has to be in the single digits, right? Like, you just they haven't seen it. Yeah, no, you're right. I think there are a lot of people now who want to proclaim uh, full knowledge of all of these quarterbacks because they've been, quote, unquote, studying the tape. And, you know, unless you are truly dedicated to doing that as a job, like someone like Mel Kuyper has, you just don't know because who's watching Liberty games? Like, what conference does Liberty I think if you were to, like, pull a bunch of people at your bar right now, Matt, and ask them what conference Liberty plays in, they're not going to have an answer for that. Courtney, I'll go farther. If you've watched multiple Liberty games and you didn't go there, you need to go reunite yourself with your family because you're spending not enough time there. You're spending too much time on Saturday doing other things. Like, that's the problem with this draft is that the guys just at the top just aren't that. Now, with that said, one of the things we've seen is sometimes the most boring drafts, when they actually occur, crazy stuff goes on. Do you think there's any possibility of that? So that's what I was alluding to with Detroit, potentially flipping the draft order by taking a quarterback at number two, because in several of Todd McShay and Mel Kuyper's mock drafts, they've had Detroit go in quarterback at 32. I would like to see that happen at two, and then potentially taking Malik Willis, and then pushing everything further down the draft board. I think if I'm Detroit, 32 is a great pick to have because you get that extra year uh, for the quarterback. You get an extra year of having him under contract under a rookie deal. If you get him at the end of the first round, if you take him to the second round, you don't. So I think that's a great place to have it. And if you're like me and you don't necessarily for sure believe in any of these guys, if you assume the third best one will, will fall to you at 32, I think there's a good argument, Courtney, that the third best one has just as good a chance to be good as the first best one because all of these quarterbacks have faults. Well, and especially that late in the draft, someone getting taken at 32, that's effectively a second-round pick. That's a second-round grade, and if you're taking a quarterback there, it's not somebody that you automatically anticipate A, being the starter this year, B, being a franchise player. Do they develop into that? Yeah, but it's not what you're getting off the bat. Lamar Jackson's a different case, and even then, he didn't start his rookie season. So, I mean, there's there's a lot of unknowns with this class, and I don't truly know that even if Carolina took a quarterback at six, that 
control himself and punch somebody in the face. Like, that's a problem. And I think that that's kind of internally what's been brewing within the Giants organization. That, you know, Joe Shane and, and Brian Dabler are looking around saying, we didn't draft this guy. And we don't know if he really wants to be here. If football is his top priority, if he's going to be a problem, which he was last year. I mean, there were some weird things during OTAs where his cleats became a problem and he didn't show up. Like, all of this stuff just leads you to believe, is this guy going to be dedicated to what we want to try to build here? And for a team that's trying to go the clean slate approach, trading him might not be the worst option. Yeah, you don't want to hear from a player that you're banking on for the future of your franchise that he has cleats problems, right? Like, that's not something that you can sit there and say, well, that's exactly what we're looking for. So maybe it is best for everybody involved if the trade is bad. Well, the draft is Thursday night. It'll be right here on ESPN and ESPN Radio, second and third round on Friday. Will any of the top teams trade down? Will any of the teams, like, like Courtney said, like Detroit trade up? We'll find that out. Plus, four playoff games today. The Raptors and the 76ers have already tipped off and are going. And right now, you get to an early Raptors 12-point lead. Will they be able to hang on? We'll keep you up to date on all of it. That's next here on Game Day on ESPN Radio. Americans. 
Advisor. Let us help your next chapter be the best one yet. Call 800-464-0955. 800-464-0955. 800-464-0955. aren't perfectly round or perfectly straight. This cause is bending and twisting offline and swing. This is deep here. Golf's leader and shaft alignment technology can fix this. The patented technology finds the most stable position of a shaft, allowing the club to deliver up to 24 more yards off the tee and land 18 feet closer to the hole. SST Pure has been curing shafts on the PGA Tour for nearly 20 years. You can even have the clubs you use now retro pure. Visit shop.sstpure.com for details. shop.sstpure.com. In the last decade, 63% of tech IPOs have used this to gain visibility and control over their financials, inventory, planning, and budgeting. What is the solution, and why should you care? Answers at netsuite.com slash XM. netsuite.com slash XM. Hockey fans, stay over to NHL Network Radio Channel 91 for non-stop hockey talk or listen anywhere with the SXM app free for most subscribers. Miguel Cabrera gets his 3,000th career hit today. It comes in the first inning of a split doubleheader against the Rockies. Cabrera, the 33rd player to get to 3,000, and just the third Tigers player joining Ty Cobb and Al Kaline. Right now, that game in the sixth inning at Detroit, first of two, and the Tigers lead at 5-0 on ESPN+. Four NBA playoff games today. First up, Game 4, 76ers and Raptors with the Sixers looking for a sweep. Toronto has the lead 53-47 with less than a minute to go before the half. Luka Doncic is probable for today's Game 4 against the Jazz. Dallas leads that series two games to one. At 7 Eastern on ESPN TV and radio, Game 3 for the Celtics and Nets, this time in Brooklyn. Robert Williams returns for Boston. Ben Simmons hoping to play in Game 4, but ESPN's Nick Friedel says the Nets need to get Kevin Durant going now. If you start getting some shots down early from a Seth Curry or Goran Dragic or somebody else, Maybe that can create a little more space, but the Celtics defense on Durant has been unbelievable through the first two games. And unless Steve Nash and that staff find a way to create some more spot increases for Durant, the Nets are not going to win this series. Nick Fresnel on Dowry and Mel. Boston leads 2-0. After that game, also ESPN TV in the app. Game four: Timberwolves and Grizzlies. Keyshawn, J. Will, and Max. It's a best in that they're going to score. Jokic had 37 to 15. Look at those numbers on the whole island. Those, those, those are great numbers. But he didn't have impact on the game. Get more from the guys Monday morning at 6 Eastern on ESPN Radio and on ESPN2. Sixers trying to avoid a sweep. The Raptors, you and I both, Courtney, I think thought this was going to be a better series than it was. But I tell you what, before we get to that, we now do have on the phone Jordan Reed. He's ESPN's NFL draft analyst. And with the draft coming on Thursday, the Raptors can wait. They're not going to do anything anyway, Jordan, so who cares? We might as well go to the draft. And I got to ask you, we were just talking about this earlier. I am trying to get myself pumped for the draft. The NFL draft is one of my favorite things in sports, but I'm having a hard time with this one. I don't know the quarterbacks. I've never seen Malik Wills play. Kenny Pickett I saw a couple times and wasn't too thrilled. A lot of the guys at the top. Help me get into this draft. Help the regular fan find a reason to think this draft is going to be exciting. Well, first and foremost, good afternoon to you guys. Thank you, thank you for having me on. But that's the that's the big dilemma about this draft class as a whole. Whenever you don't have a quarterback at the top, it's just hard for some fans to get to it, just because it's the most important position in sports. That's what everybody wants to know about. And then we've been spoiled over the last years as far as having really good quarterback classes. Last year we saw five go to the top fifteen, but prior to that, 
we knew Joe Burrow was going to go at the top, and then also Kyler Murray at the top as well. This year, we don't have that consensus quarterback one, just that guy that has really jumped out to us and announced his presence as the top quarterback overall. So that's what makes this draft so mysterious, but it's going to be fun for us on Thursday. There's usually a lot of smoke screens this time of year, and there probably will be going into the week ahead with the draft coming up on Thursday. But the one that's really intriguing to me is that the Steelers don't like anybody outside of Kenny Pickett. Like, do you believe that to actually be the case for them at quarterback if they end up going with one and 20, or do you think that Malik Willis is in play? I'm going to Courtney, honestly, just because the Steelers have been at every single pro day as far as all the quarterbacks. They've been at every single one. Kevin Colbert, Mike Townsend, and also Brandon Hunt, just like the GM in waiting after Kevin Colbert. All three of those guys have been at every pro day for each and every one of these guys. So it's just tough to get a gauge of which ones they do like. You're hearing them taking each and every one out for dinner. So they're doing a good job of playing coy and staying tight for the best as far as which one that they do like. I think they do end up taking one at 20. If I had to guess right now, I don't think Malik Willis is going to be there. I think he's going to go much earlier than that. But keep an eye on Desmond Ritter, the quarterback from Cincinnati. So who are the so if you say Malik Willis is going to go earlier than 20, where is he going to go? Because I sit and look at all those teams, and outside of Carolina, I just can't think of an obvious team that's, that's going to pick. And if you get to 20 and you want either Malik Willis or Kenny Pickett, how are they both going to be gone by then? Who do you see grabbing those two guys? Well, I've been standing for a while. Keep an eye on Detroit at two. And I don't, I'm not just saying that just because I want to. I just think Garrett Goff is a quarterback that you can win with. But we saw how quick the L.A. Rams were to pivot away from him to a quarterback that you can win because of. And I think in today's day and age, you have to have a quarterback in this league that you can win because of, especially when you want to be a contender year after year. Jared Goff is the perfect placeholder in case you want to use him as a bridge to the next quarterback. And I know Jared Goff still is young. He has a very cost control contract over the next two years. But I think that would be a great situation for Luke Willis to pitch him into. That's not to say he's going to go at two. I just think they should consider it. And I think but do you think he's worthy of two? You think he's worthy of two, Jordan? Like, I mean, you think he's a good enough? I mean, you get a talent at two, you're getting fired if that guy doesn't succeed. Or do you do you believe it enough in the Liberty quarterback to have, to put him in that level? Yeah, I do. Um, I mean, you're going to hear this quarterback class is very underwhelming. And once again, that just goes back to what I was saying as far as the quarterback classes that we have had in years past. But when you're stacking up the talent of a lot of these guys, I think Malik Willis probably would have been quarterback four or five. He probably would have been a tour at the bottom of some of the classes that we saw last year, I would say. But if you're talking about, once again, like you say, taking a quarterback or two, I definitely think he's worthy. Now you have to be patient with him. Then he has to have an established starter in front of him. He's not ready to go from day one just because he's so raw in the position. He needs to still learn the nuances and the details of the position. And the Detroit Lions also had him at the senior bowl, too. And they got really excited on some throws that he was able to make, too. So it's just something to keep an eye on. Well, what about the quarterback class as a quarterback class as a whole, Jordan? Is there anyone, and we've heard Mel Kuyper earlier today say that, you know, could be two, potentially three at the most taken in, in the first round, and that's kind of been the consensus feeling for a while, but do we think any of these quarterbacks that are going to get taken in the first round, or maybe even early on day two, are any of them ready to play this year? I think there's only two, but that's Desmond Ritter and also Kenny Pickett. I think those two are probably your best bet as far as the ones that could be first round and they're ready to go. Where I play Carson Strong, so no. I don't think he's going to go to late day, day two or day three. But when you're talking about just the responsibility that they were tasked with and just how well they were able to go through that avalanche of information that they were able to decipher successfully over a, a longer period of time than some of these other quarterbacks, that's why I think they're so pro ready. I don't really like to use that term, but as far as, like, ready to go right now, I think that they were able to prove on the collegiate level. I think some of the things that they were asked to do to make a difference and then what they were asked to develop, I think kind of help them on the next level. Talking to Jordan Reed, ESPN NFL Draft Analyst. And I think where guys like you make your money, where guys like you show your knowledge, is not much at the top because every, you know, every goober thinks they know the guys in the top ten. But what about that second day? So, for instance, I'm a big fan of Wondell Robinson. He's a second-day guy that I think is going to be big for some team out there, the wide receiver from Kentucky. Who are your second-day guys that you think maybe should be in the first day and when they get picked? Somebody's going to be really happy. Yeah, I mean, we could be on, on this line all day talking about some guys that I like on day two. The first one for me is probably Jalen Petrie. 
the Saints from Baylor. I like him a lot. He reminds me a lot of Tyron Matthews. He was coming out of LSU. As far as just how active he is around the line of scrimmage, the big question that I had about him entering the, the pre-job process is just how well he was in coverage. And he played that star position today for on his defense, the head coach of Baylor, that Mika Fitzpatrick made notable when he was at Alabama and saved his defense. And you just see him do everything. He had eight and a half tackles for ball. Last season, Big 12 Defensive Player of the Year. And he just is so nosy and so active around the ball. But I just think there's so much more to the cover with them as far as the coverage. And he was able to do that at the senior bowl. And I was blown away by his performance. I actually would take him at 29 or 30 if I was the Chiefs. I feel that comfortable with Jason Feature, and I feel that great about him. sitting there 21 saying you know what these receivers are coming off the board green bay's got two picks they've got a lot of picks in the draft kansas city's got a lot of picks in the draft the wide receiver runs about to to wash out maybe a team is going to come up and and give me an offer that i can't refuse and get more picks in the second third round so but if they say the kobe dean i love this bit georgia linebacker Best IQ, football IQ, of any defensive player in this entire draft class. I'm convinced of it. Just, just study the tape. So you put that IQ with Bill Belichick on a week-to-week basis as they're changing their schemes and their game plan the way that they do more so than any other organization that I'm aware of in the National Football League. Dean just would be a perfect fit. If it's not the Kobe Dean, Devin Lloyd from Utah fits in that general range at number 21 overall. Cornerback could be the pick there. We talk about Andrew Booth. As the, as the fourth quarterback in this class coming out of Clemson. And then you get to 54, and it's basically, is there another off the ball linebacker like Christian Harris from Alabama, or a cornerback there like Roger McCreary from, from Auburn? So I think those are some of the positions that you'll see in the first couple of rounds. But again, I would bet that Bill Belichick moves out of that 21 spot when it comes to draft night. Yeah, Todd, you said move back. Uh, yeah, I'm going to be anxious to see if they even try to move up. Two guys that really seem to me that scream Patriots are Derek Stingley Jr. coming off the injury and Jamison Williams wide receiver coming off the injury with the Saban Belichick connection, needing a guy like Jamison Williams, needing a lockdown corner like Derek Stingley Jr. who could still be available maybe in that 12 14 area. They move up to get Stingley Jr., move up a little bit to get Jamison Williams, or as you say, move back a little bit. And I think when you look at that, this football team, you say, okay, the Kobe D. I'm going to be watching this. No player has ever been more pushed to a team by any analyst than Todd McShay is pushing the Kobe D. So, Todd, you're trying to convince us that Todd McShay is successful. You're trying to push the Kobe to the Pats. All right, so the Kobe D. is officially going to the Arizona Cardinals. I think the team is supposed to geographically distance from the Patriots uh, on the NFL. So, uh, used quite a few first round picks on linebackers uh, in recent years. Uh, let's go to Buffalo, who is the king of this division right now, and Valley's got clean one here. They got basically all their picks, uh, plus an extra six this year, and a team of not a ton of teams. Uh, and you think about that in Singletary, the way he played late in the year, was that move them away from Grace Hall running back guy in the state? Did they take points, or did they wait and take a Kenneth Walker the third? Did they wait and take another running back like Pierre Strong Jr. from South Dakota State? Quarterback's a big beat area, and that's the thing. I like backs that go for Michigan. I like him as a great overall defensive back, slot corner, tackles with Xavier the quarterback. They stay where they are in college, Eagle Blue Jr. from Clemson. They got to get a point at some point in the first couple rounds. But that kid backs that built to me. Five star recruit out of high school, number one safety, flies to the football, great speed, great awareness, and tremendous versatility. Coached by a guy who's got a defense coordinator, McDonald, with the Ravens at Michigan. So for me, let's say, it was a safety guy. He's a slot corner. He can do everything you want in a defensive back for today's game, Todd. Uh, love Dax, though. I'm not sure he's going to be there for the first half of the Bills. Yeah, I love him, too. He's, he's a great uh, football player. And that would actually make sense for what they need. You mentioned running back, cornerback. The other position I'll throw in there, wide receiver. Run with the hot hand. If there's a wide receiver that happens to fall in the second round or the third round, you know, let's say uh, Chris Olave for some reason falls, or Trey on Burks from Arkansas, or Don Dodson. It wouldn't shock me if they just said, you know what? We got Josh Allen. Things are rolling on the offensive side. You can't have enough weapons in today's NFL. It, again, it's not the direction that we think. We think quarterback, potentially running back, but I think wide receiver is kind of the sneaky position to look out for with the Bills in the first two rounds. Don, and what can be, could be the quickest conversation we'll have in this entire show, really factoring in next week as well. The Dolphins have 
four picks as they have made a trade, obviously, for Tyreek Hill, six picks going to Kansas City, and a subsequent trade of Devontae Parker, which included getting a pick next year and trading a pick this year. So they're thin, but it seemed well designed. What do they do with the same pick they have left? Yeah, and I mean, this roster is loaded. It might be the fastest offense in, in all the National Football League. Yeah. I think offensive tackle, linebacker in two spots. I mean, we're taking real big leaps here, but Kellen Deitch, the offensive tackle from Arizona State, maybe in the third third round. Troy Anderson uh, from Montana State, the linebacker, is a possibility in the third round. Those, those are a couple names that could still be available, but I mean, we're throwing darts at this point with the Dolphins sitting there just waiting for over two rounds to hit them. The offensive line is the whole team in this football team. They have names, and they have potential. Do they figure out the right places for these offensive linemen? Will that like, group gain cohesion? Will Tua be able to get the football after these receiver which these receiver which is especially be that point guard option show showed a little bit more arm strength? Uh, and Tua and the goal line will dictate everything for the Dolphins this coming year. And this year, the time is right to create happy memories in the home you love. Starting with Serta Pro Painters. They're ready to beautify and protect the space you live in. Treating every wall to a colorful new coat of paint for you to enjoy. They'll handle every detail. Prepping and painting until the job is done. And we see that smile on your face. Go to SertaPro.com to get a free estimate today. Serta Pro Painters. That's Serta with a C. Proudly use Sherwin-Williams Paints and Stains. Each Serta Pro Painters business is independently owned and operated. You work hard to stay healthy. You eat organic, take vitamins, exercise. So, isn't it time to think about your water? Tap water can contain contaminants like lead, bacteria, viruses, pesticides, and many more. Aquasana water filters remove contaminants other filters don't and leave you with the vital minerals you do need, like potassium and calcium. What you get is pure, delicious water and the ultimate peace of mind. Visit Aquasana.com now to learn why Aquasana water filters are a must for a healthy home. Aquasana water filters are eco-friendly, low payments, and engineered for maximum performance. From whole house and countertop filters to under sink and shower filters, Aquasana has options to keep your water clean, healthy, and great tasting. Visit Aquasana.com and use promo code SXM to get up to 50% off select systems. That's A Q U A S A N A. Promo code SXM for up to 50% off. Aquasana, better one, better.
the fourth. Three point Raptors lead. Eight to shoot. Harden now top between the rims to the right side. Maxi, Maxi pull up two over Siaka. No good read with the offensive rebound. Back out to the A. Sixers reset with Harden. Shot clock down to nine. James around the building. Get on Boucher. Banks into him. Draws the foul. James Harden is going to the line. And Dick Durst. Looks like he's going to throw on his shoulder to pick it. He moves. So again, they're running at Harden. And he is really effective in this game off the dribble. He's going to the line where he's six for six. And the Sixers with too many free throws are making a one point game. Bottom line play out of Artesia High School just outside of Los Angeles. James Harden. Downtown Los Angeles, I should say. Harden, of course, two years at Arizona State. School coach Scott Perrin, now the head coach at Rice, huge factor, 10-time All-Star, three-time scoring champion, MVP after the 18th season, rolls in two free throws, Harden now 8 for 8 for the line, 6 is 12 of 13, one point game, 90 seconds into the fourth quarter, our wrap fourth quarter, presented by Toyota, Siakam turns the corner to the left corner, Achua for three, read out there, he misses, but it don't misses, but it don't flies in against the rebound, and now he passes it back on the top. 10 to shoot, Siakam with it, Siakam in the middle lane, back to Ananobi, left side, three ball, that's short, and Reed with the rebound, beat ball, ball, kept it alive, and then grabbed that one, the Sixers can take the lead, two minutes into the fourth, Harden on the dribble, by a two, and down the lane, they block him, and block him good, turn him away, here comes Siakam, Raptors going right to the left, Pascal Siakam runs into beat ball, ball, Maxi cut him off, and then Siakam reverts to the right, and that's where Reed was running the lane, and he collides. So, great defensive play by Boucher and Achua, turning Harden away, and then the Raptors come down, and Siakam being ultra-aggressive, drives it. He's going to the line, he's 4 for 4, he's got 21 points. Raptors lead by 1, Sixers lead the series 3 games to none. Fourth quarter, just past the 10-minute mark. Here's Siakam, the free throw is up and good. Pascal Siakam, his sixth year, 20 years old, 6'8", 240, went to New Mexico State. And he has been uh, quite the player for the Raptors. Three games against the Sixers, and he averaged 30 points. This is matching really, hold on, we get a whistle and a violation on OG Ananobi. Siakam made the free throw, but it won't count. So the free throw is negated as OG Ananobi, I guess, into the lane prematurely. Sixers down two, 2.05 to go. Maxi handles it. They have Siakam guarding him. And now the Sixers outside left with James Harden. Harden looking for Tobias. 12 to shoot. Harris, one on one, drives baseline. Siakam cuts them all. Eight to shoot. Fakes, whistle. What? Rodney Mack calls another foul on Tobias. And that's unbelievable. Harris was driving it. Doc Rivers putting his arms in the air. And this absolutely mystifying. So Tobias Harris now with four fouls. Unreal. Here's Siakam on a drive. Collides with Jordan. Now puts it up. Whistle. Fucking good. And a foul. And this is going to be on Paul Reed. So the foul the other end of the Sixers, and the foul at this end on the Sixers. And now the Sixers with four more fouls, Green and, and Embiid will come in for the Sixers. Toronto is up the lead to four, and going to the line will be Pascal Siakam, 24 points in the game. And now he's our NJM insurance drive of the game. 27 to go. Junior 76ers Kids Club presented by Five Below. Sign up for child for the Junior 76ers Kids Club All-Star membership. That includes an all-new 2022 welcome kit with a 76ers sleep bag, Franklin keychain fidget, to well the growth chart, and more. For more info, visit 76ers Kids Club.com. Junior 76ers Kids Club.com. Free throw good by Seattle. Maxi diving to the ball. They Knock it away and steal it. Daddy Shunk steals it. Siakam made a three-point play. Here's a two on the drive up and good. Timeout Sixers. And the Raptors roar back to life. 
force a turnover, two questionable foul calls at either end, and a turnover there on the Sixers. Maxi was literally climbing on all fours to try to get it. Bad pass by the Sixers. And Achua ends up with it from Siakam with the layup. And now the Raptors have taken a seven-point lead at 88-81. Big shift in the momentum there. We still have 9-10 to go in the game. Sixers have got to be more judicious and careful with the ball. They've got 13 turnovers. The Raptors have scored 19 points off of those turnovers. That's a huge advantage. They're plus 11.
Sixers have beaten us 16. Harris has 13. Their bench has outscored the Sixers 30 to 19. Red Band Pete out for the game. And a question mark, I would think, if he had hurt his hip. So frustrated, he ripped his jersey as he left the playing surface late in the first half. Scotty Barnes has returned. He has played for them. He's played 26 minutes, 6 points, 11 rebounds, 2 out of 3 for Harden. Sixers down by 5, 8, 40 to go. Siakam with it out top. He's got 25 for the wraps. In the lane, Tobias back into the right hand. Turns to the final lane. It's up to go. Siakam now 10 field goals and 15 tries. A turnaround at the foul line. He makes it from 15. Sixers ball. Harden with a crossover on that. Puts it up and in off the glass. He's taking him off the dribble. Harden getting some separation. Sometimes we've not seen that since he joined the Sixers, but well done there. Hart with four in a row. Sixers now 22 by James. Here's Siakam with it. Sixers have cut it to five. Pascal Siakam out top of Chua. Eight minutes to go. Siakam on the wing against Tobias. Isolation ball tipped away. Three to shoot. Siakam almost falling down. Harris is tall for the foul. Oh, man, he's had him. Great defense for 22 and a half seconds. And then he collided with him. Siakam was facing. Was facing the sideline. There was no way he was getting off a good shot. Tobias closes out. Body averted him. But foul. And I think Siakam's going to shoot three. Although Tobias is down. He looked like he may have got hurt his right leg. He's now helped upright by Paul Millsap and George Niang. Eddie Malone, the official over there. And Tobias kind of walking a little bit, trying to shake it off. That's his fifth foul. He's played a really pretty game. 13 points, 10 rebounds. Siakam going to the line. Todd Griggers asking him if he's okay. Tobias, of course, said yes. Foul line left Siakam. Here's the free throw. Athletic trainer Kevin Johnson coming up to tell Doc he's got five. Coach Rivers, I think, was aware of that. That's KJ's job. And Tobias caught him on the left wrist. Danny Green's going to have to come in. Harris bending the knees. And Siakam playing it on him a little bit. Siakam with the second free throw. Long goes to so his game three. He had made his first seven, including the first of this trio of opportunities from the strike. This is the middle one, and now, with another eight minutes to go in the game, Raptors up six. He's going to shoot one more. Harris goes out. High five to Isaiah Joe Wilkes and Green along that Sixers sideline. Far left. Pascal Siakam following up as a team. They're 82%, 18 of 22. Bends the knees. Free throw short. And it beat with the rebound. Joel only his fourth rebound of the game. Maxi has it ahead against Danny Shook. They're back with four defenders. 7.45 to go. Maxi with it. He had 38 in the first game. Joel across the court. Throws it away, and now the Raptors have it. Another cross-court pass and a turnover. Siakam collides. Ball loose. Maxi steals it. He's got another nobody to beat. Goes in, plays it up, but no good. They have two defenders back, and he missed the layup. Couldn't fault them for trying. Great job to get to the rim. Anobi there. Now Siakam has it. Raptors with it. Down the lane. Fouling it be. Sixers have got to get some stops. Again, the Raptors spreading the floor. Two guys on the far sideline, two guys on the near side, giving a wide chasm if Siakam can attack. Terrell has thrown countless cross-court passes. The players anticipate the length, the athleticism. I don't know if we saw that ball came to the air too far. He was throwing it from the right sideline all the way to the left corner from about where he had never ranked in his shot. These defenders are just too good, not just the Raptors, but NBA players in general. And it beat with a high turnover ball game. The Sixers now with 14 turnovers in the game. We talked about winning the possession battle. The Raptors have taken nine more shots. The other night it was 12. Like Doc Rivers, that's like starting the game. The other team gets 12, 12 attempts before you even touch the ball. So you got to protect the ball. Two free throws. Now the Raptors, Siakam with 30. The lead is 93-85. Sixers got to get going here. Maxi on the move. Maxi in the corner. Danny Green for three. It's all no good. Danny Shaw with it. Sixers misfire. 42% from three. Boucher, Achua, Young, Ananobi, and Siakam. Joel guards Siakam. 505 going by in the fourth. Raptors 93, Sixers 85. Siakam on the dribble, driving on the egg in the lane. Stop, shoots 
Simmons up off the back row. Rebound, Danny Green. Sixes go to Hart. James Hart across midcourt. 6.40 to go. Need a run. Hart for three. Shot up. In and out. Too hard. No good. Sixes miss back to back threes. One by Green from the corner. One by Hart down top. Raptors with six and a half to go. They take timeout. Our fourth quarter, our pass. Fourth quarter is brought to you by Toyota. Siakam getting a big break here. Toronto by eight. A victory sends the series back to Philadelphia. A comeback by the Sixers in this game closes out the Raptors. Defense, and the Sixers need to get some of these shots to go down. Back after this, you're listening to the NBA playoffs on the 76ers radio network. Hey fellow Sixers fans, it's Dave Keller from Game of Dodge Chrysler Jeep and Ram. Have you ever wondered why it's so gosh darn hard to buy a car? We all know the prices, we know the trade values, you know the interest rates, so what are we goofing around for? Well, you won't get that with me. Online, on the phone, in person, just pick out a car and I'll get you a price you love. No jokes, no games, and great cars. Jeeps, Rams, Dodges, Chrysler, and hundreds of certified used cars. Hey, isn't it time you buy the car the way you should, the car the way you should? And that's why I've always been your dealer, even if you didn't know it. Are you still looking for new auto insurance? Yeah, I might go with the one whose commercial has that football player juggling guitars. And a cat appears and hums a jingle. What about the one with the runner on a roller coaster? Eh, the cat is cuter. Some insurance companies are known for their mascots. Do you know anything about their insurance? Not yeah, really. Does it matter? NGM is known for what matters. Outstanding service you can count on. No jingles or mascots, just great insurance. Visit NJM.com to see if you could save up to 20% on your auto insurance. My mom's the bomb. Her hugs are so good, there's a wait list. Her laughter is the life of the party. Her smile makes everyone smile. Everything worth knowing, I learned from her. That's why this Mother's Day, I'm heading to Hellsberg Diamonds. They have beautiful diamond pendants, gemstone rings, and more. Hellsberg makes it easy to find a gift she'll love. One that hopefully she'll pass down to me one day. Along with her secret to perfect helps. Save big on mom-worthy gifts at a Hellsberg store near you or at Hellsberg.com. Hurry, Mother's Day is Sunday, May 8th. Gentlemen, you can easily find the best brands and fits for you without even trying. Just follow these simple instructions. Step one, shop somewhere that does all the work for you by customizing a selection for your taste and body. Step two, level up your closet with the best brands and fits with little or no effort. Not trying has never looked so good. Stitch Fix, we're so you. Listen to the 76ers Radio Network. Sixers is going to buy teams. Their largest deficit has been 12 early on in the game. Close back and forth to six ties, eight lead changes. Raptors, though, led at the half by five. Sixers cut it to three. Toronto, the big keys as they're turning the Sixers over. More points off turnovers than the Sixers. The capacity here is 19,800, and it is for sure a setup. They got scored the Sixers by five here in the fourth. When it comes to insurance, trust the pros, not a mascot. NJM, no jingles or mascots, just great insurance. Get a quote at NJM.com. Tightly contested playoff basketball tonight or today from Toronto Saturday afternoon. Plus three club here in Toronto. Sixers defending in front of their bench. The Yang, Tobias Harris out with five fouls for now. Two three zone first we've seen from the Sixers with the zone. It was effective in game three. Doc Rivers may be saving it for this last six minutes of the game. Siakam in the lane, banks into Danny Green, puts it up to well with the rebound. Siakam in the paint, but two defenders are there. Sixers get a stop. That's one part of the formula. And now the offense, halfway through the fourth. Our Toyota, bad fourth quarter. Hard to it be. The left of the lane against Achua. Here comes a double. To well to Hart, back to it be. To beat out the move in the lane. Falls down, loses the ball. And they tie him up. So he is off his game a little bit. He's played 35 minutes. That time he made the simple pass back out top to James. Made a dribble move. And lost his footing. And slipped down. And they call, I believe, a jump ball. It'll be OG, Melanomi, or Precious, and Chua. 
Edge to L to our right. 2.2 on the shot clock. So should the Sixers win the tap? 5.51 to go. And B against the Chula. Scott Foster will put it up. The opening toss of the game was really not all that great. Let's hope this one's better. And B trying to get the angle on the Chula. Ball goes up, but you tips it. Ball goes to Danny Green, though, and he shoots it. It's an air ball, no good. They get the rebound, and they're going to play on. Pines is going to come back into the game. 540 to go, so that's another turnover on the Sixers. Raptors ball. Every possession is used. Here's Siakam on a blow by, and he missed the layup, but a foul on it beat. So he had Joel on an island out of the right wing. Turned the corner on it, but Bean recovered. But Joel is called for the foul. That's his third. Sixers are over the limit. That's their 15 foul. 535 to go in the game. And that's the fourth foul on it being. So here's Siakam is trying to carry the Raptors to victory here. Trent was hot earlier. He's back in the game now. And Siakam with the free throw up and good. 31 points now for Pascal Siakam. He had a career high. He had a career high 30 double doubles during the season. That's the most by a Raptors since Chris Bosch, all the way back in the 09 10 season. Free throws, they've had 26, 10 more than the Sixers. Second free throw by Siakam, really good. Now the Sixers trail by 10 with five and a half to go. If they're going to sweep the Raptors, it'll be a remarkable comeback. Maxi on the move, Maxi with the layup, left it short, and beat got it. It goes out of bounds. So Maxi was a little further away than one would hope on a driving attempt. Difficult angle, could not get it. And the Raptors have a chance to push the lead to 12 or 13. Oh, boy, okay, Five yeah. to go there in the throws of a 13 to 4 one over the last four and a half minutes. Here's Siakam with it, shoots on Joel in the air, back rim off, long rebound of Hart. Hart with his fifth yeah. rebound, six is ball. They need to get going. Well, got knocked down again. 15 on the clock, under five minutes to go. Ten-point deficit. Adobe guards Harden, James outside right. One-on-one, -on -one. Harden with a step back. Oh, man, they drill him. If he gets the rebound, no good. If he goes down again, Raptors with the run out. Raptors in the air with a foul on Chua. Boy, I don't know if that ball was blocked on the Harden shot or whether he was fouled, but it ended up being two feet short. And then the other in the end takes a hard foul on Precious Achua. And it beat went down, he received the ball. Yeah, although we, I guess James just did not get it up on that shot. And it beat went down. So now the Raptors with Achua at line. He's only got two points in the game. 85 85 and he misses the free throw. Again, he had those two big free throws that he missed on the year, just 59 percent. He had a postseason high Wednesday with 20. He goes one for two from the line. The Raptors 96 to 6 is 85. So Maxi will bring it across our sideline. Embiid is there to end screens. Tyrese comes out of the right hand dribble back to Joel. Embiid on the wing against Danny Shunk. Big three guys converge and they call a travel on Embiid. He just, Joel is out of sync, not on his game. Three defenders came over and the walking violation. Now the 16th turnover on the Sixers to track his pivot foot. And the crowd with derisive cheers for the Sixers All-Star. Let's go Raptors. Great down from on high here at Scotiabank Arena. Trent with it. Sixers so got to be careful. The lead is 11. Basket here would make it even harder. Here's a oh, shot by Trent. No good. Well defended by Joel. He gets the rebound. He leads the break. He's got Maxi in front. Joel down the lane. They bump him and a foul. So the Raptors now with their 14 foul. Indeed with the miss. Able to drive it right down the part of the foul is shooting two. So this would make it 96-87. Raptors want this review. Siakam a little indecisive. Nick Nurse is going to take a timeout. I think the question that they have is would this be a shooting foul? Boy, when you look at your top player and ask him for a kind of answer, he can't just look at the match. Here's 12 of the guys, two for three. Touches front rim, but no good. Again, part of the storyline of being playing a sword. Right though, more than sword. Here is the man injured. And he'll shoot the second rim. That's the official restoration part of the Sixers. Okay, I'll go back for the restoration. Keep filling the line. We're going to top this year. 
to go. They're trying to see whether a hostile act. I would imagine it would be to well the way he ran into Siakam. We'll be right back after this. Most people are fine driving with basic tech. But with the 2022 Nissan Rogue, you don't have to be. It offers an anything but basic available head of display, unlike the RAV4, so you can keep your head up as you look for the next exit wrap out of basic. Leave basic tech behind with the 2022 Nissan Rogue. Now buy three eligible tires and get one for just a dollar, or get 0.9% APR financing on the 2022 Nissan Rogue. Hurry, there's limited availability. Contact your local dealer for inventory information. Shop NissanUSA.com. 2022 Road versus 2022 F4 based on manufacturer's website. Tire offer available for a limited time. Eligible and select OEM, OEA, and WI and tires only when purchased from and installed by a participating Nissan dealer. APR for well qualified customers subject to my credit approval. See dealer for financing details. Take from new dealer stock. Call 1 888 858 for offer details and important safety information. Tire offer ends 43022. APR offer ends 5222. They do review it to see. If it was a hostile act, they, they don't call it a hostile act. They call it a dead ball, dead ball contact. So Siakam was calling time. Joel ran up to him, but apparently made contact. Technical foul on Joel. Here is Gary Trent Jr. to the line. Welcome back. 3:06 to go in the game. Toronto with a 13-point lead. One shy, their largest lead in the game. Side out, the Raptors have it. Trent Jr. along with Siakam, Young, Achua, and Ananobi. Interesting that Barnes is out there. He's playing, but he might be on a minutes restriction. He's at 25 minutes. Sixers need to pitch a perfect game in the final three minutes. Siakam with it. Maxi and the B-guard. They get a screen. James comes out. Siakam with a shot. No good. Rebound, Tobias. 
11 rebounds for Harris. Sixers, though, are being out rebounded by five. Need a basket at the risk of overstating it. Here's the bias. Now Mo puts it up and good from the left baseline. Right hand leader got it on Precious Achua. Tobias with the rebound clutch bucket. Sixers trail by 11. Two and a half to go. Raptors looking to go on the board in this series and make it three games to one. Here's Trent into the lane. Underhand scoop. Way too easy. And they're going to win this game. They're up by 13 with 2.50 to go. Gary Trent Jr., 24 in 38 minutes. 38 minutes. 8 of 20. Siaka, 34 points in 43 minutes. Two minutes to go. It's a beat out top. Joel, 7 of 16. And out of nowhere, and Embiid gets into the coming man, and he's hit with a T. So it is getting a little feisty here in Ontario. So Embiid fouled. They're over the limit, and then a technical as well. Maxi will shoot the T. As it be pushed by Anobi, and then Anobi pushed back, and uh, they both kind of back and forth. Joel would have been thrown out if it would have been double tees. One technical, it's on Anobi. Two minutes straight up to go. Maxi misses the free throw. So the Sixers come up here to win in overtime Wednesday in game three to take a commanding three games to the league. The Raptors, after a tie score in the first quarter at 24, outscored the Sixers by five. They actually led by 12, 50 to 38 in the second quarter. Lead by five and a half. Sixers rally back to the, the three-point game, but they cannot get any continuity as it beat with a free throw. Joel has missed two free throws. The crowd roaring, getting on and beat. 104-91 Toronto, two minutes to go. So the Sixers just missed two straight free throws. They have six more fouls. The Raptors have shot 11 more free throws. And it's a 12-point game with under two minutes to go. Siakam with the ball. He's played a game-high 43 minutes. Now chanting, let's go Raptors, as you may be able to hear. Siakam on a drive, pass deflected by Danny Green from the linear timeout. Achua gets it, makes a move into the lane, and the layup is good. 135 to go. They're up by 14. Good drive by Achua. Here's Hart with a shot. Great move to get three. Three point shot, no. Joel saves the rebound in the corner. Shot clock back at nine. Joel has a back down against Siakam, but a foul on Pascal Siakam. So the Raptors lead 106 92. Doc Rivers bringing in Jaden Springer, Isaiah Joe, Paul Reed, Mervon Corkbox. Sam Cassell coming up the sideline. And hold on. Eddie Malloy coming over. Sixers got to stay out of the court. Not about to change until a free throw is shot. And then the Sixers would have just had a beat and a hard enough line. So the best of our understanding, the time has not been announced, but I believe it's going to be 8 o'clock on Monday at the center for game five. Here's Joel's free throw good. So obviously it beats Thumb. Will be a question as he gets treatment late tonight, tomorrow, Monday. He makes a free throw. He's got 20.7 of 60. It was his shooting, but really more than anything, it was his passing. As the Sixers call timeout with 123 to go. We'll be right back. has been delivering Philly its hometown flavor for just about as long as the 76ers have been around with the NBA. That's 76 years to be exact. Talk about a tasty coincidence. So hers knows how important this time of year is. When it's the playoffs, you feel it. That buzz, that energy, that thrill to win. It's here once again, Philly. It's time to root for our team, our city. Game time, halftime, overtime. Anytime is the right time to break out the hers. Hers, official chip of your Philadelphia 76ers. 
It's Natalie Aganoff here with some exciting news. The all new Bet Parks app is now live. Take it from me, our new Bet Parks app is everything you want in a mobile casino right in your pocket. It's easy to sign up, fun to use, and faster to win than ever before. And right now, all Bet Parks users get a $20 casino bonus simply for logging into Bet Parks. So download the new Bet Parks app today. Must be 21 plus and in Pennsylvania or New Jersey. Gambling problem? Call 1 800 Gambler. Sixers in court miles playing in. And 
crowd giving the Raptors a standing ovation, realizing there's a shot by Joe for three, realizing this may be the last time they see the Raptors if the Sixers win game five, and they're applauding the victory to be sure. Time about to expire. Two seconds to go. The Sixers knocked away. Buzzer sounds. Final score. 110-102. Toronto wins the game. The series now in favor of the Sixers, three games to one. Siakam with 34. Gary Trent Jr. had 24. No 13. And Anobi had 11. His least effective game. He was 3 of 13. And the Raptors get on the board, keep their season alive. The Sixers shoot 42%. So did the Raptors. They got eight more shot attempts. Sixers made five more threes. In the end, they went from the line 28 of 35. They had five more rebounds. Turnovers, the big difference in the, the big difference in the game. The Sixers had five more turnovers. That's one thing. Yep. And it's uh, we're gonna hear from Patty and Shaw. Start this game. 
Rudy Gobert in the white uniform. <coughs> we'll jump it off in about 50 seconds from now as they push Tip back a little bit to finish up the end of the Toronto game, which just finished. The Raptors 110, Philadelphia 102. Toronto keeps their season alive behind 34 of Pascal Siakam. Joel Embiid tonight with that thumb injury goes 7 of 16 with 21 points. And we're about to get underway here. Jazz, back to the wall is a fair assessment. You don't want to go down three games to one with two of the three coming up on the road. Bear jump. Fitzgerald reassesses him. Gobert wins the tap as he has the tap as he has but from the series. We're underway. White uniforms. Mike Conley hands to Donovan Mitchell for the first set play of the night. Donovan guarded by Finney Smith. Tight curl to Bogdanovich. Donovan. Cut off by Doncic. Right hand push shot just slides off the side of the basket and Doncic rebounds. Doncic, highest use usage rate player in the NBA. Does he change the way the Mavericks play? Powell right elbow. He's their center. Doncic comes to get him. Turns the corner. Gets in the lane. Lobs the Powell slammed up. A play that simply had not been a part of their offense without Doncic. Conley. Right wing by Doncic. Jabs right. Goes left. Attacking Doncic's foul in the rim. Luka is not a good defensive player. And the Jazz will go at him as often as possible. That previous play there by the Dallas Mavericks, Luka got real deep for the lob there to Powell. And you're absolutely right. That is something they have not been able to come up with in the first three balls. Powell's success seems to be dictated largely by being on the floor with Luka. Bogdanovich misses the first three throws. Boyan having a very good series, averaging 25 points a game. First free throw, no good, the second one good. Here's one. First two possessions, David, I'm sorry, but the one in your bit going to play Luka off the ball. But right now, Grubbs is going to play the ball off the first. Now, of course, they play the slowest piece play during the season with Luka. Luka, mid block left guard, and a 6 1 combo. Runs to the baseline, takes to the end, pushes up an easy three footer. 4 1. Luka's been a star at every stage and early every time. Tommy, left wing to Donovan, comes off the go bear, and they switch it. Now double it, wrap around pass to the corner, while Donovan from three, no good. Rebound tap the bullet, long outlet to Brunson, Mavericks run. Brunson will stop and pull for three and miss. Conley taps the rebound to Gobert. 4-1 Dallas. Donovan puts across the half court. Tries and fire three, no good. Donovan started slowly the other night. He misses his first shot. The Jazz have missed their first three. Generally, all pretty good looks. Brunson driving as Conley in the post. Gobert comes over, so he fades back. No good. Donovan rebounds. Donovan high stepping across the half line. Signals to Mike to come get it. Gives it to Conley. Works off until Bear Victor's right. Rolling his Rudy through the lane. Rotates going to the end. Fires a shot and misses. Didn't take one the other night. All rebound to Brunson. Falls to the ground on the rebound. And that offense is good. I mean, those are good shots. The Jazz got to start making them. Jazz making Doncic work. Picking him up at 94 feet. Bogey to the side. Driving Doncic to the basket. Easy layup. And for the first time, Lucas says something to an official. 6-1 Dallas. Conley has picks waiting up each side. He flares at the top to O'Neal. Rotates to Bogdanovich. Ball movement by the Jazz more active today. Donovan pinned on the corner. Retreats out the left side. Step back three and the left. No good. Rebound comes down to Finney Smith. Jazz have missed their first five. Four of the threes. Donchich at the top. Donchich, one of the all-time great playoff stat lines in NBA history in this limited playoff time. Turn around, pass, 
to Vinny Smith, catch and shoot three, angle right, squirrels out. Dallas has hit three of their first six. They lead six to one. Donovan to the front court, hands to Conley, double stagger, right to left, Conley drive, in the lane, floats, misses. Loose ball, rebound, Dallas. Jazz have missed their first six. They're playing tight, baby. Right side, Brunson, good closeout by Conley. Brunson bumps and backs on the six from Conley, shading him as Gobert. So Brunson takes the left hand, dribbles through the lane, pivoting to the basket, shot up, no good. We have a whistle, and I think a foul on Mike Conley. And Brunson will go to the line. Ron, I was talking to some people involved with the Jazz beforehand.